It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Renee, Andy, and Alex are here. We're going to talk about the latest Mac rumors, why you probably shouldn't buy the brand new MacBook Pro, and the big stockholder meeting coming up this week. It's all ahead on Mac Break Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for MacBreak Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is MacBreak Weekly, episode 339, recorded February 26th, 2013. Big Finger Friendly. MacBreak Weekly is brought to you by LegalZoom.com. LegalZoom is not a law firm, but provides self help services at your direction such as affordable business and personal documents you can trust. Visit LegalZoom.com and use the offer code MBW to receive $10 off at checkout. And by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create a professional website, blog, portfolio, and now an online store. Check out their new commerce solution so you can start selling stuff immediately. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase on new accounts, go to Squarespace.com and use the offer code MacBreak2. And by GoToMeeting with HD Faces from Citrix, the powerfully simple way to meet and collaborate with colleagues and clients from anywhere. You can share the same screen and see each other face-to-face -face with HD video conferencing, even from an iPad. Sign up for your 30-day free trial today. Visit GoToMeeting.com, click the Try It Free button, and use the promo code MACBREAK. And by... Pond5, the world's stock media marketplace. If you're a media maker looking for video, photos, illustrations, music, sound effects, after effects templates, or 3D models, check out Pond5. And for an exclusive 50 free stock media files, go to pond5.com slash MacBreak. It's time for MacBreak Weekly, the show that covers your little Mac needs and your big ones, too. We all have them, don't we? Admit it. Joining me right now from Baston in the Chicago Sun-Times. That's confusing. Mr. Andy Anatko of the Celestial Waste of Bandwidth. Hello, Andy. Hello, and the mighty Chicago Sun-Times. Let's, let's do buzz marketing wherever we can. Mighty Chicago Sun-Times. The bright one. I don't know if they're still using <laughs> that, that slogan. Was that the slogan? That was the slogan. I Sounds think. like a radio station. The bright one. Uh, also, a good one for toothpaste. It's uh, I, I think that you, if you if you go from the dollar bin for for slogans, you, you have a lot to pick from there. <laughs> I got my I got my slogans at the dollar bin. Uh, also with us, Alex Lindsay. Nice to see you with a picture of a you and a goat. Have you seen? Have you heard the goats? Is this uh, the, the goat human screaming. voice? Yeah, the goat screaming, screaming goats. <laughs> I was gonna. I was. We, there was a something before this. I'm show. sure Chad could insert that at some point. Yeah. We had just. Yeah, we had just. Is a new. It. Me it's we're good. thinking of doing a. Sh uh, and and then welcome. Nice to see Thank you. Thank you, uh, Renee Ritchie from imore.com. Good to see you from snowy see Montreal. You. Absolutely. I have no sun nor no goats. It's just snow everywhere. Aich, a vault. <laughs> you might have goats. They could just they'd be buried under the snow. You hear an occasional muffled ba, and that's about <laughs> yeah, all. You spring can. comes and there's goats. So <laughs> I, it was a sound effect for when Andy was talking about beard and and but I didn't you're not get it done. I didn't get it up in time. System. I know I was going to show it to you and then have you play it. It's then, uh, the it was human all, it voice all screaming goats on YouTube. It all Chad. made sense before the show started. I wasn't going to talk about it. Is that it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like when Andy was talking about the neighbors complaining about the sound. <laughs> 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 Do not buy that goat, whatever that is. <laughs> what kind of goat is that? Are what are those to... kids doing down there? It's a lot of goats. Unless, <laughs> oh, you know, uh, unless you're trying to fabricate an ironclad alibi for something absolutely horrible you're planning for six it's weeks the in the goats. future. It's the goat. <laughs> it's the, there's a goat in my basement. That was my thought of the sound of someone trying to pull all your facial hair. Out. <sighs> <laughs> you just you just don't want to be like. Apparently, there's many of these. Yeah, yeah. There's a whole like, there's like a whole long thing of them, and then someone mixed it into a uh, Taylor Swift song. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, now that I, I'm okay. intrigued by now. No, no, you gotta play it, Chad. Oh a, yeah, let me play it. Taylor there's Swift, a Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift song. Uh, is they making it sound like Taylor? Swift? No, it's, it's like? cut it. No, I don't know. It got posted. Uh, that was, that's not ruined it. I don't know what a Taylor Swift. Just do song. Taylor Swift goat scream. <laughs> <laughs> that's the. That's the. I know that sounds really bad. I know that sounds really bad, there's but apparently it, there's a Weezer. That, that'll be the a Weezer goat scream as well. Oh, the Weezer one is really funny. That's the one that I know about. 
Um, of course. You know, we're thinking of doing it now. I increasingly want to do this. And Chad, I think you have to be a part of it. A uh, YouTube, like, um, you know, talk soup for YouTube. Some people must do that, right? Yeah. I just think it'd be fun to have, like, in it between. Be. Uh, I knew you were trouble when you walked in. You guys see the video. I don't know why that's so see, funny. See, here's all I gotta say is that we work hard on this show. We work hard on this show. And how many views do we get on YouTube? Like, you know, thousands, you know, 2,000, 3,000, 10,000. Apparently there's Bon Jovi, there's guys, Weezer. It's, it's like, like whoever's got the screaming goat just is sticking it everywhere. Or, and we're not even talking about the whole... I knew you were a goat when you walked in. <laughs> Actually, the goat screams better than I do. Yeah. Um, that's, like the, that's the new... That's the new well... <laughs> What? That's the new Wilhelm scream. Yep. What's Wilhelm scream? I'm gonna, I mean, like, I'm gonna use that in movie. Oh, you know. Oh, okay. Oh, the Wilhelm scream. Right, right. So that's, that's gonna a be screen that's used in one, movies everywhere. From now on, like, when, wait, if I do a movie from now on, it's gonna yeah. be that goat. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Wow. The Harlem Shake. We need to do a Harlem Shake. We did one. Oh, you already did one. That's so over. <laughs> Get with it. So you, you, we need I've to do traveling. a YouTube show so that he knows what memes I've been are still traveling. Hit. Harlem Shake you know, is so two weeks ago. There's an amazing race team that are like they're like YouTube celebrities. Like they make their living on YouTube. And as soon as they were announced on the premiere a couple weeks ago, I'm thinking, if they're on the Amazing Race for like 30 days, by the time they come back, they're not going to know anything <laughs> about anything happening on YouTube because they'll miss like nine memes in a row. See, that's why we need this show. We're thinking of Lamar Wilson hosting it with me and Chad, and we'll do it right before Twit every Sunday. This is the last Harlem Shake you'll ever see. Oh, this was the best one. The washing machine. This edition. was awesome. So the washing machine's starting to steam. It's starting to smoke. <laughs> Somebody threw a brick in it. <laughs> That's the best. Okay, that is the best. He throws a brick in it, and the machine self-destructs. He wins that, the Harlem Shake. That's clever, because he. How, how did he know that that would do that? He had to go through he many machines. He played vigorous testing. Several machines gave their lives to make that video. <laughs> That's the problem for production for me is that so I'm gone for like two weeks. I'm in the hole. You don't even know that I broke the table, do you? I did. I saw the movie. Well, that was the Harlem Shake. I was getting up on I the didn't, table that, that wasn't to in the, do the Harlem uh, Shake. And anyway. So um, I don't know where to begin here. Apple gets hacked, but it turns out that happened a while ago, like a month ago. And, and Apple didn't report it till after Facebook and Twitter admitted they got the same hack. Right. It was from a... Um, uh, is it Hungarian, an Eastern European site called the iPhone Deb Dev SDK site? Not that that site was a bad site by any means. I thought that we've decided that all the hacking is going on from China. Aha! <laughs> One would think. But it turns out this is more like industrial espionage. And uh, while there is some going on from China, it's a you would be mistaken to assume it's all from there China. You have it. It's apparently happening all over the place. It's so employees from... Because that's that site is very popular in search results. If you're looking for an iOS problem, uh, you'll get that site quite often, quite highly ranked. Uh, now, uh, there's a kind of banner on iPhone Dev SDK that says, iPhone SDK has learned it was used as part of an attack whose victims included large internet companies, Apple, Facebook, Twitter, and many others. We have no reason to believe user data was compromised, but to be safe, we've reset all passwords. So this is very common. It's happened to us. Uh, if you have, if you're running a content management system or software of any kind on your website, that there an exploit crops up, and because there's so many different, you know, modules and things in the, we were using uh, some third-party Drupal modules that had been uh, exploited, and we didn't know we hadn't patched it in time. If you don't patch them right away, then somebody gets in, and what they do is they don't, they're not interest is not in hacking Twit or the iPhone Dev SDK. Their interest is putting an exploit from an ex or a number of exploits from exploit kits on that website so that anybody who visits that website then is hacked. And uh, in this case, it was that Java exploit. Um, apparently, a single administrator account was compromised. Well, it only takes one. Uh, they injected JavaScript into the site, into, into the theme. Uh, and it, and the, now, this is interesting. According to iPhone SDK, the JavaScript appears to have used a sophisticated, previously unknown exploit to hack into certain users' computers. Um, it is a Java, it is a Java problem. And uh, once again, as 
as everybody has told you again and again, disable Java. Safari makes it easy. <laughs> so how, how, how much more stable are our computers if we just get rid of Java and Flash? Well, you should get rid of it, yep. but there's but if you play <laughs> Minecraft, you need Java, right? So there's things that it's yep. legitimate to have Java on there for. What you don't want is Java in the browser. Mm -hmm. Now, Apple's done all the right things. Apple uh, gives you a chance to turn it off in Safari. It doesn't install it in the first place. You have to go out and install it. And if you don't use it after, I think it was 35 days, it disables it. So there's all these protections. And still, Apple uh, developers got bit. And, and Apple also puts that into that um, malware thing that they send out, the P list that they send out regularly. In fact, it's, it's uh, twice that Java 7 has been turned off. The, the scary thing is that it's, it's often IT departments that enable it because right. schools or government institutions or big businesses have Java web apps that they want people to exactly. use. And they're not sophisticated users because they're being taken care of by an IT department. So they just go to the page and then they're exploited. Yep. I wonder I wonder if Google's going to be smart enough to use this as a way to say, you see, this is why we're saying Chromebooks are the way to go. They don't run anything. They don't really, they, they get wiped about every 10 seconds and you don't have to worry about such stuff. Eh. Well, I think that's also the appeal of the iPad, isn't it? Yeah. Um, when I get it, when I get users uh, calling me on the radio show, you know, less sophisticated users calling me on the radio show, I tell them, get rid of that Windows machine and get an iPad. And if right. it's and for many of them, an iPad's all they need, and they, you don't have to worry about that stuff. There's well, no but, I mean, the, the, but the iPad is still like a persistent computing device, whereas the Chrome uh, Chromebook is designed from the ground up to say that nothing on this device is ever uh, ever going to be necessary to hold on to. So if when in doubt, we can just nuke it from which is, or which is can't be true because books. they allow you to save documents onto your hard drive on a Chromebook Chrome OS. Right, but and there's no part of the operating system that if it ever gets infiltrated, there's a problem about swapping it out. There's no problem about right. uh, swapping out uh, browser components. No real problem about uh, a lot of that stuff. It's not that it's, that it's invulnerable to that sort of thing, and I'm not even saying that it's a, uh, the best machine to have. But if Google is trying to get traction for the Chromebook as the absolute trouble-free uh, user, uh, from the user experience, a trouble-free, maintenance-free machine, this is something that they could start pushing about. I'm not sure it, that uh, uh, it would be... Uh, that. I have to actually have to, have to double check. I'm not sure if it ha if it will use a Java runtime, uh, but this is supposed to be the sort of thing where if it ever gets influenced by something like that, none of your data can is is ever so important on this machine that it can't be just simply wiped and replaced. I Look yeah back to uh, sketch. That's it. For well, me. that's the thing. I mean, how far are you willing to go to dumb down your system so that you don't get bit? The dumber the system, the easier to mm. protect it. Well, doesn't this invite a conversation about what people really want in a PC uh, now? Yes. Because maybe people really do want the, a dumbed down system. I mean, right. we, we love, I love the iPad, but I suppose when you look at it in a very sort of broad sense, it is a very dumb machine with a very simple mobile processor that doesn't do a whole lot. And it's not very good for managing a, pro, uh, a, a project of any real complexity. But the thing is, you trade off on that and you get... A machine that is certainly the most reliable uh, PC I have in my entire in my entire office. So maybe maybe some manufacturer is going to start to take uh, pay attention to that and say maybe it doesn't re even matter if we start to have i5, i7, Retina displays, uh, gigabit Ethernet on every device. What if we just we will give you a sheet of glass in which <laughs> text and pictures will be drawn. We will yeah. give you a way to type into that sheet of glass. Everything else, just don't worry your pretty little head about it. Daddy will keep this. Daddy and mommy will keep the machine running. Johnny Mac in our chat room says, so we should all just be running dumb terminals and on live or uh, exactly. some sort of emulation. You know, v the VT100 was a very nice, uh, very nice standard. I don't know. It, when, when ANSI decided to have that, that that colored text garbage, I think yeah. that was the first step yeah, on a slippery right. slope, frankly. <laughs> well, that's, the, that's the Scott McNeely, Larry Ellison, thin client future that right? we don't have to worry about it. We right. just get everything projected but, to us. But I think Chrome OS kind of is a th is kind of a thin client, right? Yeah. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah, it's I, almost native HTML client. Right. I still have, I still, you know, my problem is I travel a lot and I just feel, I feel it when I'm disconnected, you know, in, in some of the stuff that I've done. Even though you can save stuff, I, I feel like it really wants to be connected to the internet all the time. So if I'm at home using, using a Chromebook, I, that is fine. What about an iPad? Could you get, get by with an iPad and a well, keyboard? I don't think I can get by with an iPad, but, but I definitely think that when I, again, when I look back at, look at what my parents do, I think that, that my parents can absolutely get people, by. A lot of well, simple. I mean, it just, not, it's just that uh, when you really look at the use case for a lot of um, people that are, what they're using their computer for, they're using it all day to check email and go to the web and use a couple word, a word processor and all those things work great you know, on the, on the, uh, on, on, on a tablet, whether it's an iPad or, or other tablet. 
Um, and I think that that is, and, and I think that when we look at the future of Apple TV, if they start opening up the applications, you know, being able to do those basic things on your TV, you know, is a really solves most 80% of the population's problems. I mean, I, we're in this show and people watching this show are going to go, oh, there's all these things I need to do. But really 80% 80, 80 of the people that I see on a day-to-day -day basis doing that stuff, um, you know, what they're doing with it could totally be done on a tablet goes back to that power versus empowered users where a lot of people who just can't figure out a computer can do incredible things with a tablet because it's so much more accessible. And yes, the applications themselves aren't as powerful, but in some they can get much more out of a device like that. It's almost counterintuitive, but the simplest, the simpler thing lets them do more. Well, this is the time on the show when I point out that the iPad's not all that secure either. The Apple just released iOS 6.1.3 <laughs> beta 2 to developers to fix the screen. damn lock screen flaw is back. Maps for Japan. You got, you got maps for Japan and lock screen fixes. <laughs> <laughs> the maps for Japan seems to me to be a little misdirection. Oh yeah, we had to release this to update maps for Japan. That's it. That's why we updated that. <laughs> Turns um, out they drive on the right hand side of the road. Who knew? <laughs> we Who, knew? Around. Who knew? Um, so this is left, this right to left. <laughs> <laughs> this is a so we're this is not out yet. You don't have no. this fix, I should point out. If you're using an iPhone or an iPad, uh, you don't have this fix, and anybody can get into it uh, with a not-so-easy-to-use, apparently, uh, hack uh, from the lock screen. If you use, you that's if you use the four-digit lock. If you use the longer lock, you're okay, right? It's, well, developers can get it now. So if, you're a, if you have a, a paid developer account with Apple and you're worried about right. it, you can install Beta 2. But what it basically does is... Puts the and it's the wrong word for it, but it puts the iPhone or iPad into a little stroke situation. You're trying to screenshot and make an emergency call and do so many things at once that it crashes uh, the phone dialer. Right. It, so the phone has ah. to be accessible because you have to make emergency calls. Right. So that part of the system is exposed um, and it's not secure. And by doing this strange combination of of button pushes at the right time in the right sequence, you just create a situation where it's not coping. So it's just dumping you into and it's not everything. You can't access anything beyond the contacts or the phone dialer. So nothing that's exposed beyond the emergency calling system okay. anyway, but it is an exploit. So, and it doesn't affect iPads because there's no dialer on it. And yet, yeah. but they are offering this update for iPads. So that was my confusion. So you're, you're there so- was a conf There was a confusing article yesterday that said that it would, the second, there, there was two versions of this exploit. Uh, there was slightly different key combinations. Yeah, they said there was another one. The same thing. Yeah. But, and people thought that the second one would give you access to the file system, mm -hmm. but it looks like the guy just plugged it into his version of iTunes. Ah. And if you've ever authorized an iPhone on iTunes, you have access to the file system. You don't need to put in your passcode every time. <laughs> stupid. <laughs> yeah, so that was a bit of a scare. <laughs> hey, look. Uh, but, and you, I'm sure, write about this because you've been doing a lot of evasion coverage. It also may be that this 613 breaks evasion, the jailbreak. It, it breaks at least so far one of the five exploits. It, it's getting really complicated to get into iOS devices because they're becoming more and more secure. And I believe they needed five different exploits to get evasion working. And this looks like so far it breaks at least one of those. So whether they can code around it or whether they have to think of something else. We'll have to see, but that's not the current version. That's the one going to be coming next. He says, uh, "If uh, this is, uh, in all th in the Forbes, uh, they're talking to uh, Andy Greenberg is talking to, uh, to David Wang, the creator of Evasion. He says, <clears throat> if one of the vulnerabilities doesn't work, Evasion doesn't work. Yep. So it needs them all to work. He said we could replace that part with a different vulnerability, but Apple will probably." fix most if not all of the bugs we've used in 613 so apple is actively it now okay so here's the question is apple just fixing bugs or is apple actively trying to s stop evasion well the thing is that evasion is uh and you talk about this on security now all the time there are good guys and there are bad guys and any exploit that a good guy can use to give you a jailbreak and access to the root of your device to do things that you want to do, a bad guy could use to get right. access to your device and do things you really don't want him to do. So the minute that these exploits are discovered, it is absolutely Apple's responsibility to patch them so that nobody can do anything, um, you know, badly intentioned or evil with the device. The side effect of that is the jailbreak goes away or they have to look for another one. He, in fact, Andy points out that uh, Apple did not move very quickly to block evasion because uh, it was a relatively low security risk that the tool poses but of course they're gonna fix it as you said because it's a security flaw how do you think but apple doesn't like jailbreaking right 
It's like a 50, I don't know what they feel about it now, but it, there was a sense a, a couple of years ago that it was almost like a playground because Apple doesn't have a, they don't have an open developer beta sort of community. You get what Apple's going to release and you can test it, but it's not a two-way street. And Jailbreak let people try out all these different ideas for multitasking and all these different ideas for system enhancements that Apple could then, if you look at iOS 4 and iOS 5 and iOS 6, there's direct correlations to new features and jailbreak extensions that had done that and tried that first. So maybe on an engineering level, a lot of them, and a lot of jailbreak people have worked at Apple and have left Apple and gone back to Apple. So I, I think there's a respect in the engineering level, but I'm sure from the security standpoint, it's not their favorite thing. Okay, there it is. There's the story. You should, uh, 612 just came out. I just got it uh, a couple of days ago, right? And now we're waiting for 613. Mm -hmm. 612 does not fix the jailbreak. I so mean, don't lose your phone. lock. And it doesn't block the jailbreak. Don't lose your don't phone. Don't lose your phone. No. And if you, but if you said it, if you are worried about that, you can use the more complicated pass phrase, right? And yep. that will, that while it's a pain in the ass to unlock it, at least it will protect your phone. Is that right? And they need physical access to your phone, which is the other thing. Right. Don't yeah, don't lose your phone, as yeah. Alex said. Don't leave it in a bar. <laughs> like, avoid consumption of large quantities of alcohol in general. That'd be my advice to you. Because they'll Twitter bad things from your account if they find it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's take a break. We've got a great panel. We're talking about Apple on Mac Break Weekly with Andy Anako, Alex Lindsay, Renee Ritchie. Uh, our show today brought to you by LegalZoom.com. It's not a law firm. Don't confuse this. What LegalZoom does is it provides self-help services so you can do the legal work you need to do uh, at a much reduced cost. I want you to visit LegalZoom.com and take a look. They can do, for instance, a will. They can do a trust. They, I, I love this. In fact, I used it. They can do an LLC, trademarks, patents, NDAs, Protect yourself. If you're a blogger, you shouldn't you shouldn't forget that you know that you're investing a lot of time and energy into your name or the name of your blog. Should you protect that? I'd say so. Um, if you have a company and you don't have an LLC or an inc or an, a, a corporation, you should absolutely do that. And you know you could start an LLC at ninety nine dollars. I mean, it's not expensive. If as you, and it's just a, it, you go through the legal Zoom check boxes one by one. You've, you, it, it asks you questions, you answer them, and then it actually create generates a form. But if at any point you go, gosh, I'd, I'd like to talk to a lawyer. For instance, I did. I said Delaware or California Corporation. Now I had to pay a lot of money to go out and talk to my lawyer with legal Zoom. They now have, they didn't have this at the time, an extensive network of attorneys. They have a legal plan, and it's available in most states. They've got reviews for the attorneys, profiles unedited customer reviews so you can pick the attorney at a fixed price so you could say california or delaware what is the pro and con on that and get that kind of legal advice as well it's really kind of the ideal best of both worlds in the past 12 years two million americans have used legal zoom for llc's wills trusts trademarks and more i invite you to try it visit legalzoom.com and uh, bring your dreams to life that's their slogan good good fences make good neighbors yeah <laughs> you know, that, you know, it's, I trust. I think a lot I'm of, a trusting person, yeah. but it's always good to have a document yep. that just spells it out. Yep. Then, then there's no question. Yep. You know, handshakes fine. I do a lot of handshake deals, but we try to have written documents because mm -hmm. then you go, well, let's refer to the the document here. Legal Zoom will do it for you for much less than you might think. Start your business, protect your family. You do have a will. You need one through LegalZoom.com. LegalZoom is not a law firm. You can get self-help services at your specific direction or speak to a legal plan attorney to get your questions answered and get ongoing advice. For a special thank you for using LegalZoom through MacBreak Weekly, make sure you use MBW in the offer code at checkout, and we'll just we'll just cut $10 off. It's I know it's not a huge deal, but it's just a little something to thank you for saying MBW when you use LegalZoom.com. But it is my strong advice that you uh, that you check out LegalZoom and, and think about what you want to protect. Because <clears throat> I hate to say it, but we live in a land where <laughs> you need this kind of stuff. <laughs> LegalZoom.com. We thank them for their support. I love these touch screens. I can't wait till everybody can get a <laughs> MacBook with a touch screen. It's just so great. You just scroll up and down and touch things. And golly, it's so cool. I just... Did you see that band yesterday, the Mayo, where it, it reads the electrical impulses in your arm and uses that to control the yeah. UI elements on the screen? It'll be a great pairing with Google Glass. So then you'll be going, like, <laughs> elbow. And the watch. So have the watch, the band, and the 
Yeah, that's wow. great. That's just what I want. <laughs> People, you already think you're crazy talking into your Bluetooth headset. Now you're touching your glasses. You're lifting your elbow. You, you look like a nutball walking down the street. Oh, it's okay. It's my, just the Google Glass. Well, whatever, whatever you're going to move your elbow, just make sure you have your Nike uh, fuel band. Right, on. then you get a couple extra points. Yeah, exactly. um, actually, your hands are cheating. Sergey Brin and his wife, uh, what's her name, Ann Wojcicki, which I never know how to pronounce it, uh, were at the uh, Vanity Fair Oscars party <laughs> wearing their Google Glass. And you know what they're trying to do. They're trying to make it cool. Like, oh, yeah. we're not dorks. It is cool. Yeah. Is it? I mean, yeah. Also, they, they have that. They've got a, like a Twitter hashtag program where and an application uh, thing where you can uh, put, you can put, lobby them for the for the gift of being able to purchase Google Glass right. early for fifteen hundred dollars. You tweet and but but fly as, to as, the as cost and purchase it. <laughs> right, but but it's, but it's funny because you see, oh, I wonder if I'm going to get it before like Adam Savage of MythBusters who says that I want to wear them on the show and like yeah, exactly. have, have Buster's perspective as I'm working on them or well, the, I wonder if. I, I wonder if, like, you know, if I'm going to get them before, like, Doogie Howser gets his because he says he wants to wear them on his number one rated network sitcom. <laughs> like, okay, maybe maybe my idea yet. that I would probably look into a mirror and really like, really enjoy having that sort of, like, infinite mirror <laughs> effect. That's not quite as cool for Google's marketing purposes. The best one was LeVar Burton where he put the hashtag and said, uh, for me, it would be a downgrade, Jordy LaFleur. Ah. <laughs> LeVar's getting one. I yeah. can promise you that. Well, the, the thing is, is that you know, my, my, my uh, litmus test is my wife, you know, because, you know, she's not necessarily that techie about. Does she you know, wear glasses? She does not wear glasses. So here's a person she who doesn't cannot have to wear wait. glasses. And she, she cannot wants wait. To. She's angry that she, ha she didn't have them five years ago. <laughs> wow. Because her, for her having the them. kids? For her being able to go, you know, say, record this. Um, and, and what I'll be really interested to know is what really will blow up with Google Glass is if they put a buffer, like a two-minute buffer into, the, into Google Glass. Where you could turn on a buffer mode, it'll burn the battery up. It'll turn on the buffer mode, so it's recording the last two minutes of your life. And anytime you say "save, save that," that. Yes. that is that would be good. That would be, be outrageous useful. because then you want to wear them all the time because you're sitting there. You don't you don't want to like anytime but you're going to something show interesting. You is there is a big battery right in the back here? You you have plenty of battery. The battery could, could go around your head if it wanted to. But if you I'll fire it up and have it mine. recording all the time, it'll. Be much. It won't we'll not through it. last as long. Yeah, well. I, th I, I thought you were saying that uh, have a, t a two minute buffer so that if you say, "All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna totally murder this half pipe," <laughs> and then the guys are in a heap on the ground saying, "Okay, uh, destroy that last two minutes of video, <laughs> please don't." Well, you know, a lot of a lot of and make sure that never goes out. Like those Russian car cameras. Yeah, it's Russian dashboard cams. That's how they work. But just imagine how many if you had a two minute buffer or even a one minute buffer, but really a two minute buffer. Just imagine how many people would how many things would get captured that you didn't think about going up to get, and how often it, you. I don't know. I'm, I'd wear it all the time. They've Anytime already I'm doing banned cell phones in the locker rooms here because people were taking and uploading illicit pictures. I can't imagine what's going to happen when glass is popular. <laughs> yeah, It'll be that little brother thing all over. Hey, again. good news. It's never going to be popular, so you don't have to worry. <laughs> uh, in fact, I love TechCrunch's article it, that at least for the first year, all it's going to be the, the one percenters, videos of their marvelous life. Here I am in hot air ballooning. Ah, yes, we're back at Davos once again, skiing uh, the Alps. What do you think? Because that's who's going to have this thing. Yeah. Just like iPhone it's, users. It's, it's, it's going to be fun when like every attendee, uh, attendee of TED like gets that in their yeah. gift bag. <laughs> so Apple's response or Apple's, let's not say response. Let's say their parallel project is the watch, right? Which will be awesome too. Yeah. Will it be better than glasses? I think it'll be more prevalent. More, it, it won't be in your face, which is a huge advantage because yeah. some people, Literally. no matter how good it is, they don't want something stuck between them and the world all the time. Right. Yeah. Well, it'll also likely be, let's, 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 let's be cautious, say less than $1,000. Yes. Uh, certainly less than five hundred dollars. I bet they're going to aim for something like iPhone, like in pricing, and that in itself is going to make it more accessible. But it's 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 going to be interesting. Like if both of these, uh, we, we know the Google Glass is coming out. We, uh, the Apple Watch is still just an if, just a just a speculation, a speculative product right now. But it's interesting if Apple can sell the idea of this as a functional, practical item as opposed to a stylish Apple gadget, because you're still going to have to tell people. Yeah, uh, well, I, I know that either you don't wear a watch or that you have a watch that you actually like and you buy it because you bought this watch because you like its style. But we're telling you that you want to have our watch because otherwise you have to use the thing that you already paid a lot of money for and get the same information from there. So they would they would have to they would really have to do the same thing that like Google's done with that video of selling the idea of, look, 
this is I, we know that was, you can wear a GoPro cam. We know that there are even eyeglass cams out there. This is better than that. This is a totally different way of interacting with technology. So Apple would really have to sell that. They they could have a huge success just by saying, "Hi, this is a cool Apple gadget that that's going to we're going to make you want it because we'll coat it with a special sort of uh, microfiber coating that makes you want things uh, that attacks your <laughs> brain stem." Uh, but to make it something that actually changes the way people use technology, that's a huge leap even for that, Apple. But that's what they do. I mean, they they people were paying seven hundred dollars for a Motorola Razor, and I remember like, it wasn't didn't Scott Bourne throw his trio on the ground and stomp on it the yeah, minute they introduced the iPhone? Yeah. They are they are usually very good at telling you why their thing is so much better than even the expensive things you just yeah, bought. Yeah, but they, they they actually had an idea with the iPhone. So I, I'm sure that I'm sure that uh, every time I say something positive about Apple now, I have to remember that this is 2012, not 2009. So I have to <laughs> qualify things. But I am at least reasonably confident that Apple wouldn't do a watch unless they could do something unique with it. It wouldn't be just be a, an iPod Nano with Bluetooth and a strap on it. But uh, it, it would be a, it would be a hill from the crime. It would be a very impressive achievement if they were to make an actual use case for a digital watch. My watch tells me that there's going to be a full moon tomorrow. How about that? <laughs> <clears throat> How would you feel now, Andy, if I tell you that Apple patented the slap bracelet two years ago? <laughs> now, how do you feel? I would feel like a lot of girls I went to junior <laughs> high with are going to have to start handing up money to Apple. That's <laughs> prior art. <laughs> Uh, they, there's this long patent about how a watch could have a slap bracelet. Um, that's, the, that's, the, that's the steel band that has two states, a straight state. Or when you hit it on your wrist, everybody knows this, right? And it goes around your wrist. I don't know. I don't. First of all, know how they could patent it. And second of all, I don't know why they would want it. Well, the slap it. aspect's not what they're patenting. It's like like usual. There's a whole bunch of different technologies. There's other stuff. Much stuff that they did yeah. to the slap bracelet yeah. to make it more make effective, it unique. Communications are facilitated through wireless protocols, though the proposed unit also contains wired connectors for syncing and recharging the internal battery. That's what I want. Ay, 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 caramba. And again, this is like they applied for this years ago. So this was just, yeah. it shows what they're thinking. Along I pay no lines. attention. Here's this. What? Tony's got one. Oh. Look at that. Tony, where'd you get this? This is, it's a gazelle. Oh, it's from gazelle. <laughs> it's a gazelle slap bracelet. I will now demonstrate the slap bracelet. Here you see it is in its erect state. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's, uh, right, and then gonna... you sl Ow! You slap it, and now it's in a curved... <laughs> Less erect state. It's, I wouldn't call it flaccid, but it's not straight. Oh. Now, how do you take it off? You just do that? Ow. This could hurt you. Maybe I don't. Maybe not, I should ask a teenage girl. <laughs> you know, go, go, out, go outside of the schoolyard and with your van. Here. <laughs> In my van. Great. Anyway, th I didn't know Gazelle made these. Is this part of the deal? If you, if you sell something through Gazelle, you get a slap bracelet? Huh? Yeah. It is? No, CES. No, it's CES. From CES. Oh, they were handing them out at CES. <laughs> Don't do it to your head. <laughs> Slap headband. Not, not a headband. No. no Leo, they should really put a warning this, on that. This, this is not this, a headband. Leo's going to sue. They better have used legal people. This is sort of an interesting interesting peek into how like exposure to new technology has just broken you. That How many times have you said, ow, oh, it really hurts when I do that, and then you did that again? I keep doing it. Three times, four times in a row? That's what I'm like, talking about. Google oh, Glass, Windows baby. Windows is hard to use. Oh, here's a new Windows laptop. <laughs> oh, wow, I can't Ow. get the mouse to work. Yeah. Hey, look, here's a new Windows <clears throat> tablet. Oh, I can't tap, the, I can't tap the, the, the touch zones on it. So true. So true. Um, Apple is, well, let's, uh, okay, we'll do a couple more. Apple's rejecting apps using cookie tracking methods because it wants you to use its cookie tracking method, presumably. Um Mo mobile app developers using a technology called cookie tracking, sometimes called the Safari flip-flop or HTML first-party cookies, are starting to have their apps rejected by the app review team, according to TechCrunch, Sarah Perez writing yesterday. It's part of a process. They people were tracking us with UDIDs and then Apple right. banned that project that process and they created their own little token that you can use and it users can turn on and off right in the settings of the phone universally. So you don't have to worry about every little app. You can just go in there and they so, actually assigned an engineer to make this and you can Ap flip Apple it off. Apple does have its ad identifier technology, which would be for the same yes. purpose. But you can turn it off. Yeah, and universally, so it's it's much easier to control right. than if everyone's using a different technology. And then they so they switched to using because Safari has always been good about. I think for ten years has been good about blocking third-party cookies, and now Firefox is doing it as well. So we're making progress. But they were using 
first party cookies to try to get around it. <laughs> and that's sort of violating the spirit of the law, if not the letter. So Apple changed the letter of the law to better reflect it. I just love it. I can pinch to zoom and everything. Look at that. <laughs> zoom right in on that. Mm -hmm. Love that. <laughs> Uh, well, and I think that I think Apple has obviously has a a business reason to do that, and b a you know the, again they're able to. It's it's amazing what people are doing with cookie tracking. We I just think have, this we just have to understand. Right yeah, I think you have to, it, we, you can look at the business case for Apple, but you can also just look at. We just have no idea when you go to a web page. Yeah. You have no idea what they're what they're doing. I mean, I regularly am clearing out my cache because it's just. Yeah, no, they're doing the right thing for sure. There's a, there's this thing where you could, you, all you need is a unique identifier for somebody and a mobile phone number works great as a unique identifier, but you, people start doing customer analytics and, and consumer like analytics based on these things. So if Alex buys diapers and beer, that goes into a database. And if he goes to a store and he buys Coke, well, Coke doesn't know he bought it, but the store knows he bought it now and they can sell that information back to Coke. They can sell it to Pepsi as competitive information. They can sell it to Lay's, you know, to help them market their chips. And it becomes this huge secondary economy and a lot of big companies are moving into that. And Apple makes absolutely no money off that kind of data yet. So it, you know, it helps them and hurts their competition at the same time. And again, as a user, I just want to have be able to know that I could turn one switch and say, okay, I don't really right. want anyone to, to, to pass that. I, I, I like that I've part. come around to this. It's the same thing, and I was very critical of Apple when they blocked 500px's apps. Mm -hmm. because. But now I understand, <clears throat> five, it was a very simple thing. 500px didn't tell Apple in the you know code that it was possible to see adult stuff. By doing so, they just make it easy for a, a parent to go into the settings and say, block anything that is 17 and over. And so it's just a great thing to have a single setting right. that you could say, look, you know, I want to see adult stuff, but I don't want my kids to, so I want to be able to turn that off. I do have to point out, though, that that is a kind of a failed system because we've been trying to block um, uh, adult stuff on an iPad that uh, Lisa's 10-year-old uses. And you can turn that on, but... Google search still will find, I mean, yeah. it, there's, it's really hard to prevent anybody from entering in sites and going to wild sites. You just, so I like the fact that Apple puts this switch in, but I think people should understand it's far from perfect. Right, there's lots of loopholes, as you'll learn soon when Malachi gets just a. Well, oh, I've already. The third, the third YouTube video is always inappropriate. It's like the exactly one, no, right. It's, it's one, the the third one's always wrong. It's right. the it's the Angry Birds hole for us because Malachi watches the Angry Birds movies and then then yeah. he goes from the, the movies to the YouTube yeah. and then yeah. he goes from YouTube to the third one. But YouTube isn't that. I mean, there's nothing on YouTube that's really awful, is there? No, yeah. it's just a lot of swearing. You know, it's, it's, swearing. it's mostly yeah, that my, yeah, you know, yeah. you have a four-year-old who is you don't listening to people screaming to yeah. obscenities, and your and then your wife is looking at you like, does he really need to use that iPad? You know, that's the. But you must be happy yeah, about I'll, the fact I'll, that. I'll, Go ahead. No, I'm, I'm, and and even, and even then, it's like, yeah, but uh, can you turn off the comments because that's where even the worst. Yeah, stuff is. you're right. Yeah, he can't he he can't read those yet. It's impossible. <laughs> and so, so he's not admitting to it anyway. And, and so I guess the question is: Is Apple? Doing uh, Apple's clearly doing the best it can, but is it giving people the wrong impression that they can actually that you can actually control this stuff? Shouldn't shouldn't they just say, look, you should, an unsupervised kid using a computer is a bad idea? Well, I think you keep on tightening that. I mean, I think that, that there's a lot of places a lot of people would like to go. You know, right. with with that with that. Uh, it's hard. It's hard to make a device that's both an adult and a kid could use. Right. Um, but I don't think I, I think a lot of people. I don't really look at it like a device that I want. I just want an iPad that only my kid can use. You know that right, that, that exactly. is exactly that's locked, locked, that's, locked, locked. Yeah, locked. that's like I can yeah. just lock it completely down. I don't <laughs> care about it going back and forth. I just want to. You know, this is a classic problem though. And as, as kids get older, of course, they learn ways around. But in privacy, tickets. yeah, you can turn off Safari. You can, you know, like you, you can't can turn off Safari, right? And then because I don't, my son doesn't need to surf the web right, right now, so then, I turn off Safari, right. and then yeah. you turn, then you then you close that stuff down, and right. there's holes. It's it's it's, it's pretty. It's good. not. At five, he's not hacking through that yet. Right. So, you know, so it's enough to, you know, I think as a parent, you're not looking at a perfect solution. You're and looking at eliminating 95, They 98%. have guided access, so you can lock it to one app if you want to. See, well. that's like good. Just give them the game and lock that's it. That's what you that want. You want the, uh, yeah. you don't want blocking. You want uh, affirmative action. Mm. <clears throat> like they can only use these sites. Right. Um, and when my kids were younger, I used OpenDNS, and that was also a way to do it on the router. Right. And then kind of block it globally from a lot of stuff. Right. And that was useful as well. And you keep your kids safe or you create super intelligent hacking kids. So it's win. Yeah. Yeah. Which which I did. <laughs> so I'm proud of that. Uh, Apple did settle the lawsuit over kid apps. You're going to get a $5 iTunes credit. Congratulations. Or cash. <laughs> a fin coming your way, baby. Nice. This is the case. Uh, I have where... a lot of accounts. So it might, <laughs> it might turn into more than five. Could be 20. Yeah. Um, 
A settlement offers a $5 iTunes credit or cash if the account was more than $30. This is a case of kids racking up charges on In, the App Store. So one of the guys that works uh, that works for me, um, uh, his daughter racked up four hundred dollars yeah. charges Easy in like half an hour yeah you know just what well, he wasn't looking so the, so we've had that problem too and of course what you do is you make that you turn that feature off in app purchasing now app uh, right. a couple of years right. ago apple turned that off mm -hmm. in app purchasing is turned off without a password and then you just there is a period of time the password's good for you to shorten that to the shortest possible time and then the kid just harasses you saying please give me the password please give me the password you <laughs> say, no 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 um, so I think Apple's done, did the right thing a while ago. Remember there was a lawsuit uh, a couple of years ago. Um, Tapfish. That was the one. Yeah. Tapfish. Uh, Kevin Tofel of Giga Ohm's kids spent $375 on virtual fish. Yes. I actually think that might've been the same one. Somebody's got to stop me from buying donuts. Please. I beg of you. <laughs> please. Please. You got to sue first, Leo. <laughs> I need help. <laughs> I admit it. I am out of control. I'm powerless. Anyway, I'm surprised that Apple uh, settled on this one, but I guess it's not going to cost a huge amount of money. Settlement still has to receive uh, approval from a federal judge, although it's not unusual if both cases agree to that, have that go through. Um, early 2014, before you get your $5. <laughs> Just... Waiting with bated breath. Don't spend it yet. Yeah, I'm just, I was okay, thinking about, I'm just I was saying. thinking, get a coffee. And yeah. Like, get a cookie. <laughs> Don't run out and spend it now. Get an in-app purchase. Yes. I always check my iTunes emails, and, and it's it's fun because I'm reading along. Oh, yeah, I bought that for iPad today. Oh, yeah. Who the hell bought $300 worth of donuts? Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but no, then there's like swords and infinity blade. And there's um. all sorts of crap that I don't, zombie stuff. I didn't buy that. I wonder, I wonder if this will lead, that will lead to like a, just an overall bad consumer experience. Because I, I sometimes get a bad taste in my mouth when I pay a buck ninety nine for. I, I just, as a matter of fact, just the other day I bought the uh, Usagi Ojimbo game, and I think it was like something like a buck ninety nine. It's a fun, it's a fun game, and I'm enjoying it. But there comes a point where okay, I got killed at the boss level the first time, and now it's asking, do you want to? If you want, you can buy extra armor. If you want, you can yeah. buy this. If you want, you can buy that. And isn't that the the same reason why you hate going to certain events? Because you know that yeah. the ticket the ticket alone costs you forty five bucks, and now they're going to try to sell you the t shirt. And now they're going to try to uh, charge you the for the yeah. sweatshirt. It's like at what point can well, you say, "I want you to promise me that I'm, I can I'll give you ten bucks, not two ninety nine, but now. promise me that you'll give me a complete self contained wonderful experience with this amount of money." Well, and I think I think that, that uh, but I think that the other side of that is is the I think there's there there is a fine line there. I mean, because I think that. You get into a situation where you don't also want um, uh, the amusement park to charge you an extra eighty dollars so that they can then give you the T-shirt and give you like you know you give you all that stuff. I, I didn't want all that stuff, you know. And so, right, well, like, I, like, like the paper app. I think that I think that was the, a great way to get yeah. around Apple's uh, refusal to let people try apps. You can get the basic experience and environment of the app for free if you want the cool extra brushes, which I mean, would say that, well, those are actually the brushes you really really want. Then you start incrementally making purchases, and if you buy everything, it's like ten bucks, which isn't a whole lot of money. It's just it's, it's, there, there are times when I encounter a game where it's kind of an it's kind of a, a trivial amusement unless you start putting more coins into the slot machine and keep pulling the lever. Uh, and it seems you, you get the impression sometimes that some of these games, the whole intention is just to keep you at the slot machine, keep you smoking, keep giving you free drinks, so you just is. keep putting money in and keep pulling that lever. Right. And we t we told them to do this to us because you know Super Monkey Ball came out when the when the App Store launched at ten dollars and people complained and we wouldn't buy games that were just outright purchase and now Real Racing Three is coming out and it's free to play so you play it but then if you want to repair your car or get back on the truck right. track faster you've right. got to purchase it we told them we would not pay a fair price for the game so using Apple's system they've now figured out a way to make way more money using games that are far more annoying and we, we all end up doing it. <laughs> which is we're, much we're, much better than not allowing people to have a a, 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 a trial mode so yeah well, i wish they had they, a trial mode i do yeah or at least uh refunds like on windows phone or android where you have a few a yeah. few seconds or a few minutes well, that's to decide the problem. you don't want it. it it used to be what on android it used to be a, a, a it was a day and then it was, it was shorter a, and then it was and now shorter it's like again and a minute 15, yeah or something it's ridiculously short <clears throat> All right, we're going to take a break, come back with uh, more. We're talking Macintosh, iOS. There is some Mac news, I'm happy to say. Woohoo! <laughs> Woohoo!
with uh, <laughs> Rene Ritchie of iMore.com, the king of Apple rumors. Any hot rumors? Maybe. Maybe. We'll find yeah. out. Uh, and uh, Mr. Uh, Alex Lindsay, where have you been lately? Uh, I was in L.A. yesterday. Yeah. And, um, but otherwise, in that's Seattle hardly, that, last week. With your travel schedule, L.A. is like no, next that's like, door. That's, that's nothing. That's like, oh, yeah. That's, you get there in an hour, big deal. Yeah, I'm in New York tomorrow. Yeah, now that's a little more. And then I'm pondering London on Thursday, but I'm not sure yet. So I might go to London on Thursday. I don't know. Hey, no, no, no. Well, I'm trying to get out of it because I'm. I, I, we have a team. I know it's so tedious going to London. Isn't it? <laughs> I'm don't you find? Well, after yeah, you've I'm done one red, red eye to New York, <laughs> it's a, it may sound luxurious, but once you've done one red eye to New York, looking at doing another red red eye to London the next night is just something I'm just <laughs> thinking. I'm, just I, I'm like looking at it. Valid. That's awesome. Like you're telling, you're a supermodel yeah. telling people that you work hard. That's what's happening yes. at this point. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Oh my God! I that's one last night. Drop by and fix their iPod again. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and Andy Anako from the Chicago Sun Times, a ink stained wretch in person, <laughs> the last of his breed. <laughs> do, they, do you still use ink? Uh, me personally, uh, fortunately, I renegotiate my contract so I don't have to work the press room. Ah, uh, I just do the home delivery uh, for uh, for the Northeast region. So. <laughs> I don't really understand how this thing works. Uh, thank you for being here, guys. We're going to talk some more in just a bit. But first, a word from Squarespace.com, the secret behind the best websites in the world. Everything you need to create a great website, hosting, best hosting ever, hosting that never goes down. And we, we try all the time to kill Squarespace sites. We kill sites. This is, you know, there's one of the th I should make this uh, a, a sign out front. Welcome to Twit. We kill websites because if yep. I point you to a website, yep. it, boom, it's down. And sometimes big, big sites, not if they're running on Squarespace. And that's what I love about Squarespace. Uh, but one of the reasons it's such good hosting is because they also uh, provide and support the software on top of it for your content management system, uh, which means you're going to be able to design a beautiful mobile responsive site, a site that looks great no matter what size screen. You can try it free for two weeks. Just click that Get Started button right at the squarespace.com. Uh, site and uh, you've got two weeks no credit card needed you don't even need our offer code just you know play with it import your content it has importers for all the major blog APIs all the SEO all the bookmarks all the images even all the comments are preserved and moved into Squarespace so you can really see what it would look like like for a full-blown site 15 minutes after you set up the site you're gonna have all the content in there and now you can play with the templates and it's just really great there is something new I want to tell you about at Squarespace once you play with it for a little while Go check out the pricing. Ah, used to be two pricing plans. Now there's three because they've just added e-commerce. This is really good news for anybody that wants to sell physical goods or digital goods online. They do it all from soup to nuts, and they do it at a very affordable price. They do not take a cut of your sales. It's simply $24 a month when you buy an annual plan, $30 if you go month to month. That includes everything, fully integrated e-commerce, is unlimited physical products, unlimited digital products, a mobile store, as well as a... Fully integrated e commerce That's new. Yes. It's fully integrated. They just started this. Inventory tracking. They do tax. They do shipping. They do coupons if you want. Uh, un and by the way, that's the unlimited plan, too. So you have unlimited pages, galleries, blogs, bandwidth, storage, contributors, everything... $24 a and did month. Did they have, like, everybody, like, running scared? I mean... They it, got it, to. It's like... twenty. The other, you know, the things, the I, you know, the other e-commerce sites, I won't name the names, but they can't offer anything like this. And by the way, they'll say it is so with painful. Let me account. just tell you. Let me tell you how painful uh, generally um, <laughs> e-commerce is. I've been doing this since uh, 2000. This, this, well, you know what's happened is this is the maturity of this, right? After a while, it all and they figured it out. And so, for instance, you don't have to have a merchant account. It, they'll set you up with that, so right. you can take credit cards and debit cards. Yeah, it's great. Um, it's got a simple interface for you to manage the orders, tracking orders, providing customer email updates, printing shipping labels, adding coupons. All of this is part of the business plan, and you've got to take a look. So just go set it up. Two weeks, absolutely free. If you decide to buy, get the biggest, longest subscription you can, because when you use the offer code MACBREAK2, you'll take 10% off that. MACBREAK and the number two. They also, when you buy a year or more, will... Uh, give you a domain name registration. I already have freepants.org, but there are others. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, I realize I can't sell free pants. You unless can't. I could like You'd do be crazy. Maybe I could do in pant add-ons. You know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about you, that. You, <laughs> oh, you want pockets? 
Mm, that'll be a dollar. <laughs> in <laughs> pant. What's that? Free How much are cargo org. pockets? Hey, look, I haven't set it up yet. Just give me a break, okay? Those pants are free. Like the airline. Oh, you want a seat? Oh, you want a bag? <laughs> you, <laughs> you belt loops? Just a dollar? No big deal. <laughs> How much do they charge for the for the safety belt on in the, in the, bell on bottoms? the seat? That's extra. Oh yeah, no, no, no. If you want cuffs, bell bottoms, any any sort of treatment at the end of the pant. In fact, if you want a hole for your leg, that's extra. Because <laughs> hey, we, <laughs> the pants are sewn up when you yeah, first. You get want it. a zipper? Oh, zipper. You want both legs. Both oh, legs. Okay. Yeah, two dollars a leg. No, no. That's, see, that's what Squarespace doesn't do to you. It's 24 bucks a month. The whole thing. Uh, you got to try it. Squarespace.com. Do use our offer code MACBREAK2 to get 10% off your first purchase on new accounts. And do check out. the. If you've been looking for a, a setting up a business, this just, this, it, the whole uh, yeah. landscape just changed. It's so easy to put the stuff together, too. I mean, it's just Squarespace. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, and what, the reason I don't love Windows, now restart your PC to upgrade the latest version of McAfee Internet Security Suite. I, I consider McAfee actually a bit of a virus. Uh, yeah. I, I, I didn't I didn't uninstall it fast enough. Right. Right. Dang. Every Windows install we do is like, really? First thing you take off. Yeah, it's like, oh, oh no. Yeah, yeah, caramba. People may ask, Leo, <laughs> this is MacBreak Weekly. What are you doing? Why are you using a Windows machine? Well, I just thought I should try it. It's a more accurate is a more <clears throat> accurate view of the Mac world if you are exposing yourself to oh, the pain all the other options. that is Windows 8. Actually, I hate to say it, but I, this is I kind of like it. I yeah, just, you like it for now. This is, this this is, be, this is great. This is, and then a week later, you'll be like, this yeah, is yeah, all yeah, a big right. mistake. Talk, check back with yeah, me. Yeah, this, was all, this was all a mistake. This is I the Acer it. S7. It is an i7 with four gigs of RAM. They did something weird. Dual 128 gig hard uh, SSDs that they've RAID zeroed to make one 256 gig. That doesn't seem does like a good idea. Does it have a VGA port, Laporte? That's all we need to know. It does. In fact, it comes with, an because it has mini HDMI to VGA adapter just for you. Nice. Aren't, yeah. Now, now, how much would you pay, <laughs> Leo? You should download iTunes and Safari. No, <laughs> sure. no. There's some limits. I will. You know, I've done that before with Windows machines. I will not put the Apple crap on my Windows machine. It's no. And I say that with all due respect to MacBreak. I think it's actually. I think it's actually a, a secret plan by Apple, Apple to make the, the to, to make the computer experience in general so bad I'm, on the PC I'm, that when you when you test the Mac, you're like, yeah. this is so much faster. They work so much better. <laughs> I know they're it's not like, doing that, but it it, it does it, feel that way. It does feel that way. iTunes on Windows is horrible, yep. so I don't I don't really and, understand. And, and on the Mac, it's just bad. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Maybe that's it. I don't know. Anyway, um, moving along. I just wanted to explain for those of you who are a little confused why I keep reaching out to touch my screen on my MacBook. Yeah, that that's not <laughs> that's not what's going on. Uh, there are new uh, prices on the MacBook Pro, uh, the Retina. And there are, uh, that's the 13 inch, and they bumped the processors for the rest. But uh, Mac Rumor uh, has taken a look at the benchmarks, and it's not, it's three to five percent faster. Actually, this comes from Geekbench. When people run Geekbench, uh, they can turn on the ability to upload those benchmarks to the Geekbench servers anonymously, and people do that. So they get a lot of information. That's I a think great, great sample. That is fantastic. Yeah. So you can see the bump. Five percent is the, in my opinion, the smallest amount you'd notice. <laughs> I don't even know if you'd notice that. I think the average person would not notice that. Probably five percent. I mean, you, you. I don't think you really start noticing. It. I mean, and what you really notice, in my opinion, still is storage, whether that's RAM or or SSD. I always, you know, that those yeah. are the things that 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 really change. I think processor speed. That's because the processors are so fast now. Right. I mean, it, it does it make used a difference to be in the last. important, but not anymore. I mean, I would definitely consider. Megahertz. I would definitely consider an i seven or i five. Right. Uh, a requirement um, and an i7 for what I do, but um, but once you get into that, whether it's a you know the incremental changes really make very. I don't even think more RAM these days makes SSDs. Much difference. It's the SSD is wow. the biggest difference. Yeah, we have we have a bunch of machines with SSDs and a bunch without, and it's just man, it's just amazing. Yeah. So recommendation: if you already you certainly if you already have a late model MacBook Pro, there'd be no point in upgrading. Right. It wouldn't hurt if you don't have one now's. Uh, okay, you, buy one. Although I still time. believe, as we talked about last week, that we're going to see Haswell processors, and you know, in September, that will be better battery life and better performance. And you have to decide if you can wait until September, because then when by September you'll be hearing right. about January, <laughs> and you'll be wondering, well, all right, all right. You know. 
Hey, you know what? If you've been waiting for an iMac, good news. It looks like the iMacs are now starting to flood into the market. Uh, Apple's Mac sales are up 31% in January. And Tim Cook says it's because we could make enough iMacs right. to, <laughs> to fulfill the demand. That's There's when I got mine. They're so such great. I mean, they are. I like that works new, of art. I got a 27 inch. It is it is a work of art. Yeah, 10 pounds lighter than the my old iMac. Yeah, I got the 21 from my my parents, and uh, it is just like it was. It just upscales the whole room. Yeah, it's just beautiful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How they gonna customize yeah. the room? Uh, how, how much? How much of the percentage of the mark, of the Mac market share is constrained simply by the fact that Apple is the only manufacturer to suit uh, in the entire world demand, and that Apple keeps trying even harder and harder to push it into new markets? They can't. Yeah, they just they can't. That's well. Yeah, that's part of it, isn't it? It's not merely yeah. making them for the U.S. anymore. Yeah. And there were, there were some, uh, I remember reading a few months ago, some reports from people who were saying, who were looking at what looked to be kind of soft Mac sales like for the desktop component right. and saying, well, this must indicate a trend that uh, that uh, people are, 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 are switching to Windows or the Wind Microsoft's sending a, a clearer message than Apple is. And no, it's that there were a lot of people who wanted to buy them, but Apple could not put devices in their hands. Now they swap devices for money, which is the best position for, for a tech company like Apple to be in. Tim Cook said at the last quarterly uh, call a couple of weeks ago, uh, we left the quarter with significant constraints on the iMac, and we believe that our sales would have been materially higher if those constraints weren't there. NPD uh, reporting, uh, actually it was from Piper, Piper Jaffrey's uh, fame, the infamous Gene Munster, Herman's brother, <laughs> that uh, Mac sales rose 31% year over year month of January. Months. I, 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 love, I love this stock. Apple stock goes down because they simply can't make enough of what they're selling. <laughs> well, but that's legitimate. It is. It's yes. just that there's an that awful lot of it. impacts the bottom line. It does. It's just that it, They're it, making the right products. They can't right. make them fast enough. Right. It's not very future thinking of uh, investors, though. Right. Because, in fact... Because investors actually a couple of aren't months very later, good at that. Yeah, yes. no, they're terrible at that. <laughs> a couple of months later, suddenly there's plenty of iMacs out there. Um, in fact, Cook much, predicted it. He said, on the iMac, we're confident we're going to significantly increase the supply... But demand is very strong, and we're not certainly when we'll achieve a supply-demand balance. Well, it sounds watch, like they've got there. Watch, watch some people complain that, yeah, you know, interest in the, in the Mac is just falling off. But you used to have to wait like four weeks to get an iMac. <laughs> now, and many, as many as you want, you can just get them next day. <laughs> it's really quite sad. That is the spin, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. But try and get a Surface Pro. Mm -mm. <laughs> they're, they're selling like hotcakes. <clears throat> um... Plants vs. Zombies, is it still free on the iPhone and the iPad? If it is, get it. it Best was. game ever. Yeah. And if, we're getting closer to the second one. That's why, right? Yeah. Like when? April? Soon? I hope. <sighs> I think it would be nice. We both. <laughs> <laughs> Alex I both. Like, 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 oh, anything that will get zombies. me from Simpsons tapped out is has my, <laughs> my, uh, my vote. Yep, still I, free. That means that's just because I think I it's actually free have a lot of fun now. playing Plants vs Zombies with my son. I'm sad that it, that I finished the game. You know, I want to. You know, right. I, I actually finished it like 12 times. Yeah, I was saying. I was like, I, was, I, was like, I finished it. I mean, you can play that like eight over times over. in a row. Yes, exactly. Uh, there's a new one um, that comes out today. Somebody sent me an email called Ivory Tower Defense. It's from an I Ivy League dropout. <laughs> <laughs> Um, anyway, I, I haven't seen it yet, but I'm gonna. I, it might be my pick. We, I think we're doing iPad today uh, early this week because Sarah might have jury duty. So, if you're watching live on a Tuesday when we do Mac Break Weekly, stay tuned for iPad today about five o'clock, four or five Pacific, seven p.m. Eastern later today. And if Ivory Tower comes out, I will probably make that my app cap just because I love that. Um, looking at what's that. Uh, I thought it was an article about it, but it took so long to load that. It, yeah, it's not out yet. Yeah, I think it's today. I think is when it's supposed to come out. They sent me an, a, a press release. You know, I just like the name Ivory Tower Defense, and you like tower defense games, so I just that's why I'm I, crazy that's why about I tower. That. Yeah, tower defense games. In fact, I was playing one on the way in. Which one? Oh, I just played Field Runners. Field Runners Two is still pretty yeah. damn good. It's and I cannot awesome. finish that last level, last level to save my life. I can't. I have trouble with all the indoor levels. The fire you know, levels. The, yeah, are those hard. are those are they're very hard. I, I can't do. I I've finished them, but I can't do them all at three three stars. Uh, at you know heroic. So I've I've, I've right. done all the other ones at heroic. And yeah. It's just a couple of the last ones That's that the I'm one. having trouble. I'm yeah. just sitting there on that one. 
Uh, if you're in Australia, you may be interested to learn that uh, Apple and Samsung, their two-year legal battle has taken, according to the Financial Review, an unprecedented twist. The case resumed in federal court this week. Each company is consolidating its arguments. There are now two judges. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is that the twist? That's the twist. It's the first and time no, in the no, history the, of the court that two twist, judges... The twist, is, the twist is that they're married and they're trying to <laughs> balance work and the relationship. I mean, is this an NBC's episode of Heart to Heart? Dust, you know, if we, if we just like, worked on the same case at the same time, we'd see each other all day. Man, we do it together. They're swapping. We can't tell which one's which anymore. <laughs> they're objecting to each other. <laughs> um, the court typically relies on a, a single judge and then panels of an odd number of judges in case of disagreement. So you'd have a tiebreaker. Uh, but they introduced a second judge because Judge Bennett, the one who's been, Annabella Bennett, who's been hearing the case, said it's so damn complicated she needs help uh, to understand the complex patents and mountains of documents. You read that box, I'll read this box. <laughs> Apple claims Samsung. I don't Samsung know if that's going to work. No. 19 patents, 120 grounds, nine smartphones, two tablets. No wonder she's overwhelmed. Crazy. Crazy. Not em not enough video in the demonstrative evidence. That's that's what I say. What does that even mean? <laughs> that's what I used good, to though. do. That used to, it's, uh, another life ago. That's what I used to do. Um, you made video for demonstrative evidence. Yeah. For so when when people would, uh, I know an enormous amount about oil plumes. Let me tell you. <laughs> um, so uh, <laughs> uh, no. So what what you do is you 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 take a complex. You know, in a patent case, you would take a complex um, uh, concept and animated so that the jury and the judge would understand actually what the technology is all about and um on the cases that i worked on the budget for the um stuff would be in between one and two million dollars and this is in the 90s um but we would build really really good animations and not not the evidence so evidence is always boring not all the stuff you see on tv because you you have to prove every little pixel that you put up there but if you um uh, but when you're just trying to describe a concept, it's actually much easier. You make it look pretty. And so it, that's actually what I did before I uh, got to Lucasfilm. Oh, that sounds like a, a job that will always have, you know, something to do. It was, it was actually, if, if, if you're the person that liked to do research papers, it was awesome uh, because literally it was like, I, you know, uh, one, one day I was, uh, well, I mean, but for me, it was just fascinating because it was like. Uh, like I've always dreamt of like working for the Discovery Channel because I used to, I grew up watching you know PBS and Discovery Channel and the idea of of uh, sitting there and building like how something works so I get to work with the world expert in genetics and then I, the world expert in in uh, chip design and you, you said I mean like literally the world expert would be sitting there talking to you for two days to, for, so that you could animate it so it's awesome from that bastion of journalistic verisimilitude the New <laughs> York Post comes this exclusive. NYPD forms dedicated team to catch thieves who steal iPhones and iPads. They're unleashing I know how to do that. The theft of Apple devices is so rampant in New York, that, it, according to this story, that a team of cops has been assigned to work with a tech giant to get stolen gadgets back, the Post has learned. <laughs> Dick Wolf to produce debuts the fall. <laughs> the Post has learned. Every time an Apple device is stolen... Detectives attempt to get tracking numbers from the victim or online records. I don't know what they're talking about. They're talking about, then they say, can you turn on find my <laughs> iPhone? <laughs> that number, known as the International Mobile Station Equipment Identity, or IMEI. Mm. Yeah, do you know your IMEI, kids? Maybe you want to write that down so the detective in New York can help you. <laughs> is then shared with the officers and police headquarters who pass it on to Apple. The company, in, based in California, <laughs> it notes, <laughs> <laughs> then informs the NYPD at a device's current location, and it could track it even if it was re-registered with a different wireless provider. Wow. Wow. <laughs> We're looking for... I think my phone's trying to find I'm its way home. I'm right now, Leo. We're... <laughs> stop it. We're looking for ways to find individuals who have stolen Apple products and returning the products to their original owners, said NYPD spokesman Paul Brown. It's being done to learn the pattern who is stealing. It turns out thieves. it's everyone. It's thieves. <laughs> thieves. There's thieves We've discovered in it. Cops also hope the partnership helps catch the crooks who are taking and reselling the devices. <laughs> 
<laughs> One stolen iPad was tracked to the Dominican Republic <laughs> and recovered with the help of an NYPD intelligence cop assigned to Santo Domingo. <laughs> Really? They, NY, NYPD, well, this, this is the long this hand. This is from the post. This, this is a lo true. the long hand of the NYPD. I mean, you know, it's... In another case, <laughs> it busted a man suspected of selling stolen iPads at a city bus stop by tracking them with Apple's help. So there. <laughs> we, st <laughs> we state that... <laughs> How are you ever going to be able to find them if they hey, don't... Eat Shut your hole. <laughs> we staked out the bus stop, ID'd the suspect, and arrested him. We recovered the iPad. <laughs> <laughs> Many of the confiscated devices are being bought in a secondhand market by people who don't even know they were stolen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They just, they they just thought the iPad. iPad was down to $39 it's now. <laughs> I just, I and got a deal. It's a flesh and hair attached to it. Yeah. <laughs> bought it for my kid. <laughs> Okay. They asked an actual expert, Ken Mahaffey, founder of cell phone security forum Lookout. He said, yeah, this technique of identifying stolen phones by their unique identifiers, it's been around for a couple of years. It is technically uh, rather simple. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Yay. Yay, NYPD. Sipowitz is thrilled to be on this beat. <laughs> Say Sipowitz. There's a whole show here. Just, yeah, just... <laughs> Great th but the great, you know, the great thing about being on that outline, the chalk outlines of an iP iPad, very easy, easy. to draw. <laughs> easy. That's, that's right how here. they break in the new police artists. Okay, can you sketch the iPad for me so we could find it? This show brought to you. <laughs> no, but you, 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 you could have it though. You could have it. You could have this whole thing. It'd be like the beginning of CSI or CSI or or or, uh, or Law and Order, Law and Order, where you see some some guy partying, drinking with his friends, and then you know, and, and, and working on his iPhone, and then he walks away to the bathroom, and he comes back, and it's gone, and then it. Dong, dong. <laughs> <laughs> so, where were you? Uh, yeah. We have a this sketchy. Town, is this your iPad? iPad? Yeah. By two distinct forms of law enforcement. <clears throat> the IMEA numbers, they track down the thing, and the police who apprehend the assailant. Law and order. <laughs> I-P-I-A-D. <laughs> and the goons that beat them up when once they've got it. C-S-I. I-P-A-D. Looks, looks like the, the perp double-clicked. <laughs> and then, then Caruso right. puts on his Google glasses and looks into the sun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for the New York Post. Actually, uh, it, it, Castle Bravo is saying in our chat room, amazingly enough, and this has not been my experience, but he says NYPD cops do follow up on iPhone thefts. It's, it's evidently uh, rampant. I, they have a whole team. My experience was a general wall of disinterest. <laughs> you I lost never, your, what do you want me to do about it? Yeah. You lost your foot. It's gone now. That's we'll never find that. Well. I lost my iPad, got stolen from the back of my car. The window was smashed. The iPad was taken. And the cops were like, uh, talk to your insurance. Yeah. What? It's not worth it. Yeah. <laughs> how much How much does it cost for all that police time? And to have a guy in Santa Domingo. I know, but I, I, I got, the guy in Santa Domingo is not complaining. He's got a good job. He's got a good tan. <laughs> He's drinking rum and coca. Cola. Oh, another IMEI just came yeah, in. Yeah. Wait a minute. I wonder if they have an app for that. Uh, uh, it's over there. All right, we're going to take a break. Come back with more. Our show today brought to you by Citrix, the powerfully simple way to meet with clients and colleagues anywhere. You know what it's called? Go to meeting. Have you tried it yet? Oh, my golly, I love go to meeting. It is a very, in fact, now that I got this new Windows machine, I'm going to put it on here. Very easy way to uh, create a meeting. If you have Outlook, you just click a button. If you, uh, you, you can do it in any email. And the nice thing is, even if the person doesn't have the software installed, they just click the link, the software installs. They don't need to make a phone call. They can use the screen, the, um, the computer's uh, uh, speakers and the computer's microphone. And if they've got a webcam, they can even use that. In fact, on an iPad as well. So you can not only present from an iPad, you can actually join a meeting and send the video, which is awesome. You, I've, I used to sit out in the backyard over at the old Twit Cottage with my iPad and go to meeting, and I would attend these meetings and do this whole thing. It was great. We need a backyard here. I do it in the basement here. <laughs> it's not the same. I have a little lawn chair, a green carpet. I use it as a tally. A tally? Yeah. Yeah. As we, 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 uh, when we're doing live events and you have people all over the world that are, you're trying to tie in, yeah. and you want to tell them all the same thing at the same time. Oh. So we have all these little iP I, uh, iPod touches, and we have oh, them very cool. sign into, into GoToMeeting, and then you put them this underneath the camera. And then I can sit there and, and, and do like a full screen keynote and sit there and change, change what I want to tell them, and then boom, it just appears everywhere. That is awesome. All at the same time. It's, 
it's the easiest thing to use because the big thing is, is with a lot of these other things, we're trying to teach people how to how to install something or how to right. put this in. What, the bottom line is just send everybody a link. It does it all boom. automatically. They click the link and it does it and, all automatically. And with the, with the iPad uh, and iPhone app um, and, and Android which app. Which are free. Which I are free. You, all you do is it gives you an identifier. You type the number in right. and boom, you're in. It's very simple. Uh, visit gotomeeting.com right now. Click that orange Try It Free button and use the promo code MACBREAK. You can do this for 30 days absolutely free. You can go to meetings on an iPhone, an iPad, an Android device, of course, any computer. It is a great way uh, for teams to work face-to-face. -face. Because it's unlimited, you just pay one low flat monthly rate. You can do what Alex does or many do. Just leave it running. So you like you can run it yeah. all day and, and work together. It's really great. Go to meeting.com. Click the Try It Free button, the promo code MACBREAK for 30 days free. And we thank Citrix. They've been such a great supporter of everything we do here at uh, Twit and of MacBreak Weekly. So the big um, the big um, shareholder meeting is when? Tomorrow? The next day? Soon. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> there's going to be a proxy battle or some Einhorn. There's lawsuits. This is Although they're not going to mention the Einhorn lawsuit. I just think that after 2008, hedge fund... Operator should not, hedge fund guys should not be allowed to talk in public. Like we, we bailed them out, so they should just shut. shut I up. agree. You know, stop, stop squeezing people. Yeah, the, just, the, what guys. they want is a. Uh, it, Apple was going to offer preferred stock, and they said, "No, -uh, no, no, you don't." <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lawsuit. I don't. You know what? I'm not even following this stuff. Well, they didn't want it bundled together. There were three initiatives all in one ballot, and they wanted them separated so people could vote individually on each one of the proposals. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That just, this, this little lizard is trying to squeeze Apple for more money because, right. you know, he yes, doesn't he can. want it. Yeah. It's just, That's how you make money in that business. Yeah. Um, people, I mean, I think that we have to get to a point when we start to think about these things that the real problem in, <laughs> the real problem in America is not the <laughs> 1%. It is the banks and the hedge funds. You know, they're the ones that are, you know, and, and, and all this stuff that we're seeing is just a perfect example of no one safe from these guys. Well, and then nobody Vipers. got punished. It's like they just kind of went on. They kept on doing it. Yeah. Um, so Einhorn says Apple's next product. <laughs> He's not giving them advice. <laughs> Should be called iPrefs. Um, a perpetual preferred stock that Einhorn argues should be Apple's next product. Shares that pay dividends forever. $2 a year for the rest of your life. The end of eternity. Oh, I don't even understand this. This is all beyond me. You know, it's, it's a, it's his, his, his real issue is Apple's got a ton of cash. Right? And I want some of and, it. And I should get some of it. Because I'm a hedge fund. I, I work at a hedge fund and we get everybody's yeah, cash. We should. We, we if, if someone has cash that, that we don't for? have the cash, yeah. we've been, we're allowed to sit on our cash. Right. But if, but if someone else is sitting on cash, well, mm -hmm. that cash should belong to us. Uh uh uh. That's uh, exactly. Uh uh. Uh uh. There's uh. never enough money. Uh, by the way, I remember I've been the one who says an iPad mini, the next Apple next product should be the iPad mini phone. Samsung is doing that now in, in Europe. They don't think they're going to do it here, but they made an 8-inch Samsung tablet with the phone software. The, all, it's got a SIM card slot, phone software on it. So you it's an 8-inch note. It's an 8-inch note. Yeah. I yeah. still think that if, if Apple just gets into, you know, just gets to a point where Apple or Android or whatever gets to a point where you're just, you're calling people internally and it's using their cell or their iMessage or whatever it is, and it's just a seamless experience. I want to call... You know, I want to call Leo, and it just calls right. them, and it uses that. You know, all of this goes away. We don't think about whether they're phones or not phones. They all have cellular service, and they all call each other. Yeah. And I can call someone's laptop, yeah. or I can call their phone, or I can call their iPad, you know, and Good I can decide idea. how it's going to go. I don't understand. I mean, it's just, it, I'm just, this is one of those few the technologies. That's the future. Well, I just, it's one of these few technologies that I'm su surprised that it's taken us this long to get there, especially when you see iMessage and FaceTime, and I mean, everything is almost there. You got everything there. you need. Yeah, it's just... And I'm sure that there's some legal agreement that's slowing it down, but I'm sure it's legal Skype has proven that the whole it's, thing is horrible. Uh, uh, and they need to reinvent it. Go ahead, Danny. Oh, um, uh, it's uh, I'm sure it's the legal agreement with carriers, but yeah. that's, that's the real fault. Well, not even a legal it's, agreement; it's, it's just the market. But it's, so, it's so hard to get these things actually working correctly. Yeah. Uh, it's terrible how if you start iMessage on one device and you try to carry it over onto multiple devices, uh, iMessage, uh, the message app on the iMessage service service just has a horrible, horrible time understanding that you've actually moved from one place to another. There are times when <laughs> I really feel as though I need to carry 
two devices with me because I started a conversation. I'm not sure if someone sent this to me as a text message or an iMessage, but it's important that if he decides to follow up on me today that I'd be able to actually receive that. And it's like, oh man, am I really going to be bringing my iPad with me just on the off chance I'm going to miss? Oh man, this is, a, <laughs> this is a pain point. This is a friction point. Apple's supposed to be good at eliminating those things. Yeah. The, the bigger thing though is every at Mobile World Congress, everybody is trying to make a seven or eight inch tablet now. Uh, and they're all priced to really just make people hopefully ask themselves if, why they were going to spend another extra $100 to $200 uh, on an iPad mini. So I don't know if that's going to be a pressure point for Apple's in the, com in the coming year. I mean, I, I still think that $300 and some odd dollars is not a great price for the iPad mini given what it's delivering and given what so many other manufacturers are, are, are delivering uh, in its place. Uh, doo -doo 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 -boo -boo. What else? Qualcomm's got a chip that could put 40 bands into one phone. But with the Rolling Stones and... <laughs> Not that kind of band. Hey and hey. the Beatles all in one phone. So, you'd, uh, so basically one phone would work on every LTE frequency everywhere. One phone to rule them all. Rule them all. And of course, that's what you want. Not just yeah. Apple, but everybody wants that because we shouldn't have to build different phones for different countries. We have three. There's, I, there's three iPhone models now. One yeah. CDMA and then two Crazy. GSM because there's 35, I think, distinct LTE bands. Holy cow. On. And yeah. it's the LTE bands that are the problem, not the, not the cell bands. It's the LTE bands. Yeah, because every, they're all using, sometimes they're using similar spectrum, but different, but different, slight different categories of bands within that spectrum, right. like higher or lower parts of it. And it's just, it, it's a bit of a nightmare. Everyone was hoping that LTE would be this big, giant leap in compatibility, but everyone, like the train tracks in Europe, everyone did them slightly differently. So uh, last week we covered the PlayStation 4 announcement coming later this year. There'll be a new Xbox. <laughs> the as well. announcement of nothing. This is like the worst announcement ever. We're not going to actually show we you. We showed a controller. Ugh. And they showed some games in development, and they showed an, a he, the head of an old man. Right. But now, wait a minute. Now, this is your business. Did you watch the video? Did you see? I mean, it's pretty I cool. I didn't watch you it. You should look. They, I mean, the, I was oh, waiting, I was waiting was to really see cool. pictures of something that was actually existed. And well, they were, it was, uh, they were talking about the game developers are going to have. They talked about, they, they said it'll be an x86 chip. With They talked a little bit about the specs. They showed the controller. There's going to be a share button on the controller. Did you The content watch? wasn't bad, but the, the, the execution was horrible. Yeah. It was long, too. Yeah. Some people were saying Two by hours. the time this is over, it'll be out. <laughs> the, the reporters in the press room were trying to chew their legs off oh, to get out of horrible. there. It was, I'm so it was glad it didn't go. Them on well, we yeah. had fun. We covered it. Uh, Brian Brushwood and Anthony Carboni from Revision 3 and I just sat here, and we actually had fun doing the coverage. And it was pretty pictures. But, Chad, what was the game where you could – was it from the people who did uh, Little Big Planet where you could build, like – uh, stuff. Then they showed how you could make puppets and right. then control them with the move controller. That was Media Molecule, and so you could use the move controller to that to sort cool. of create right. clay creations. So you would create three D things that you could then animate. That's yeah, you high. could bring into a world. And and they were showing what looked like basically a uh, um, uh, band game. Mm -hmm. what, what do they call those? Guitar Hero. Uh, yeah, Guitar Hero. Game. But yeah, but you instead you make your player. And you have the instruments, and you go like this. It yeah, you so just kind of rock out. <laughs> I know. It just it, it was just kind of like didn't seem like like just why bother? I mean, if you're gonna just wait until that's what they do. That's what the game industry it was does. Worse than yeah, that, I guess it's more. Yeah. Day, if this were one E4, day, we'll have cloud computing. One day, you'll be able to download all your games from PlayStation One to PlayStation Three. This is the future we're building towards. But it was it was like a, a speech of intent. There was no product. Don't forget about us. Yeah, I, th I, th I think that this is all about the, the, all, all the new sites that are doing live blogging coverage. This is an event that was tailored specifically right. for that. They, it, it really could have been released as probably spend four weeks releasing a video every single week, highlighting a different a different part of that. So that by the time you do have actual tooled up uh, hardware to show off, people are really excited about everything they've heard about it so far. But as it is, it feels as though you need to have the six major tech sites live blogging from this event and everybody following on Twitter. But the problem is it's like it's it's like the Oscars where you're putting on a huge show and you're hoping people talk about it, but people might talk about how much it sucked. Yeah, which is what happened. The, the, mess, the, the news, the, if you do a Google on the news item, you get a little bit of information about the, the new console. You get a lot of information about how cheesed off the people were covering it were. <laughs> well, here's the good uh, or the, uh, the Apple related news. They're going to make an app for uh, the iPhone that will let you buy games for your PlayStation 4. It's a second screen app for the PS4. 
Um, it will let you use your smartphone or tablet as a companion device while playing. You can watch your friends play if they have shared their games with an internet connection. The PlayStation app, um, you can exp exp they showed exploring maps and all sorts of stuff. And it's the app will let you buy new games on the road and download them to the console. So if you hear something like you're 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 doing Mac Break Weekly and you hear about a game that you want to play on your PS4 when you get home, you just on your phone and it'll start downloading on your PS4. So it'll be there when you get home. It's interesting how they're all going back to x86 now after making the giant power PC leap in the last generation. Right. They had a cell processor. Amazing. But yeah. they're not, but nobody's making the cell processor. So it's kind of like that was an IBM. Was it IBM that made that? Yeah, and now they're talking about how easy it is to port PC right. games to it, which might be part of their pressure as well as they want to get all the big titles it. on there faster. And and all the developers love it because that means they can write a game essentially once and it'll run yeah. on PCs, uh, Xbox, and uh, PlayStation 4. So all of that's good for developers and good, I guess good for gamers. Blizzard, that's probably why Blizzard was there saying, hey, we're going to have Diablo 3. <laughs> yeah. Remember that old game that you've already played? We're going to put that on the PlayStation, huh? How about that? Audible.com updated its iOS app to include, I should mention, they are a sponsor on uh, this show and many of our shows, to include an iPad version. Not, the, I got to be honest with you, not great. <laughs> it could be better. What happened? I haven't downloaded it yet. Yeah, I, I, I just use there. it on my it's iPhone. Not, I like it because I finally have a, you know, I used to use the right. iPhone version, but fine, you know, so it's using all the screen real estate. Right. But, well, like... <laughs> It's like, I don't understand what they did. Like, the, for instance, there's uh, they showed they have the little news stuff that they have in the iPhone. They didn't reformat it for the iPad, so it's just these little blocks of text right. on the full screen. Little things like that. It's like it felt like a little rushed. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Is it better than out. just having the 2X? Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you have more control and you can, right. you know, it's easier to scrub and all that stuff. And their iPhone app was updated, so now it's got this big... Big finger friendly interface, so if you're driving, it's much easier. I use that big finger friendly interface all the time. Yeah. It's great because I have big fingers. There it is. So there's the there's the covers. You know, the one thing that I really dislike. See how light that is? That's grayed out text. That's because it's not on the device. So it's always like that until you download it, which is not ideal. Um, you can barely you can barely read it, but then once you download it, it gets it gets heavier. There's the little blocks I was talking about. Like they just wasted space. They don't mm -hmm. reformat it or anything. I, I should have put at least some graphic under there that looked you know, pretty something. And then they took the, uh, all of these windows and just jammed them. They're not live or anything. So there's a lot. It feels like there's a lot of stuff that should be live that just isn't. a lot of room for improvement. Yeah, but that's fine. I mean, it, it, at least it's there and you can download the books. It's a better way to listen to Audible books because uh, it keeps track of where you are. And so if you go to your iPhone, then it'll know where you left off. Things right. like that. It's worth it. But uh, and it's free. I mean, I shouldn't really complain, but, <laughs> but I but I will because that's my I think job. I should pay half for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it should be half off. Uh, any other stories you guys want to cover before we get to our picks of the week? Insta share. Uh, kind of an airdrop makes it easy to share between. I don't know maybe somebody makes that make that one of their picks. I don't know between your iPad and your uh, and your desktop. Uh, what? Nothing. We're waiting for spring, Leo. We're waiting for our, our, our news in, cycles. Apple's international retail strategy. We're going to build stores and we're going to sell stuff. <laughs> I guess I don't know. I'm guessing we're going to make a lot of money. I'm guessing any stores will have glass. <laughs> Really expensive glass. Uh, all right. Well, let, I'll tell you what. Let's take a break, and then we will get to our picks. Renee Ritchie from iMore.com. Oh, I didn't ask you. Rumor rumor mill. Anything? Yeah. Well, yeah, I was worried for a while that we would have a big empty period in the spring because Apple did so many products in the fall. But now it sounds like we might have some stuff to look forward to this spring. And I'm trying to get more details, but I, I wouldn't mm -hmm. plan any big vacations yet. Really? A spring yeah. event? That's interesting. What would they announce? Tell Here's me they're not going to do an iPhone out of cycle again or an out of cycle iPad again. Well, is I mean, that, that is interesting because people are learning to counter program Apple. So we mentioned the One X and we mentioned the Samsung Galaxy right. S4. And those are coming out halfway through Apple's iPhone 5 cycle. And, you know, th that, those are going to be popular to get all the attention. And Apple won't have anything to say until the iPhone 5S. And that's typically a year away. And the same thing with the iPads. People are now talking about Galaxy Notes and whatever else comes next, more Nexus devices. So if Apple ever does, like with the iPad mini or with a large screen iPhone or a cheaper iPhone, create more products, then they can perhaps have a fuller year 
and there'll always be something next coming out, and that sort of answers the the consumer cycle problem. Yeah, but one of the things consumers like Apple for is not releasing too many products, you know, too often. That they could stagger them better. It used to be iPads in the spring, iPhones right. in the summer, and iPod Touch in the fall. And now this year, everything was in the fall, and that right. was maybe, you know, too much of a good thing. Oh, interesting. So you think they're going to get get into a back into a staggered schedule? I hope so. Yeah, that's an so. interesting rumor. So it would be if they do it normally, it'd be April, uh, March or April. Yeah, March. March I think is might be too soon. Interesting. I mean, they used to they used to have uh, events. They used to have April used to be the SDK event right. for iOS, and then that moved to summer. And then last the last two years, they had the Verizon iPhone event. They had the education event, uh, and they had another small event. La oh, the well, Mountain Lion preview came out in in uh, February, and this year there's been nothing so far. So I think we're due. But they're going to have um, WWDC in June still. Presumably, yeah. That's why the SDK moved to the summer, right? For WWDC. But that leaves that big hole in the spring, which I think they kind of have to fill now. Interesting. Well, I'll be, I'll be very curious what they do. Our show today brought to you by Pond5. A great place to go if you are a media maker of any kind for a couple of reasons. One, media makers can sell their media at Pond5, which is awesome. P-O-N-D. Five dot com, but of course, if you do PowerPoint or if you're a podcaster, if you if you're creating content of any kind, it's really nice to have all of the different stuff you can get at Pond Five. All those pictures out there that you download yeah. when you Google yeah, when you Google mountains, right. you're not allowed to use those. No, just in case no. you're wondering, you just, <laughs> yeah. just you, you you I mean you you well, can you can use, you can use them at home, and, and then you have to do attribution. Yeah, blah, but blah, blah, but blah. but I mean, most of them out there that someone actually owns those, and you need to if you're going to put them on your ad, um, you know. You need to pay for that. Yeah. Pond5.com. It's called royalty-free. That means you pay once yep. and you can continue to use that media in a variety so, and, of formats. And a lot of form, a lot of, uh, n when it's not royalty-free, you're paying literally per usage. Right. You know, $150 you know, dollars every time terrible. you use it. And um, really the future is stock yeah. photography. They have 1.4 million stock videos, 373,000 music and sound effects cuts, 8.2 million photos. They've got, I mean, eight... <laughs> And then thousands of new ones every week. And go through the browser. One of the things I really like about Pond5, if you go through the browser, it makes it really easy to see the, the photos and then to see the price. Um, and here's a stock photo of a happy man with a laptop. It's just $6.25. <laughs> There's a happy man with a laptop. And you can we imagine you're you're putting together a brochure and you want to talk about you know think about working at home you know and then there's a guy there's a happy oh, guy the if with you the work laptop. for Yahoo not so fast yeah yeah exactly uh, uh, there's a free stock here's this free stock video clip every week there's a free stock video clip this one is ants running in a line let me just uh, take a look at this one. Um, and by the way these are 1080p in most cases high definition some of them are even higher definition now that one you see the the uh the watermark but that's gone if you get the free copy obviously or if you buy it it's gone um so here's the deal we're gonna we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna set you up because we'd like you to get an experience of what it's like to buy a stock media from pond five so we're gonna set you up with 50 free files you'll create an account at pond five you'll use the browser see the files download them all and what that does is it gets you used to using pond five so that the next time when you know i need some particle physics I need uh, an After Effects of my text. You will know, oh, I should just, you know, run over to Pond5. I already got the account and uh, pick it up. So nice. go to pond5.com slash MacBreak for 50 free stock media files. That's really Pond unusual. And it is very unusual to have something built out all in After Effects. And, That's and other the After Effects so that, if you're looking at it, yeah. So, so, so when you're seeing those images there, that means you're going to open up that After Effects file and, just and, change, the and change the text. And yeah. so there's a... You know, very complex that. open. And it also means you can customize it. So all these animations, you know, that's a 3D camera move inside of um, After Effects. You can go in and change it a little bit and adjust it typically. Yeah, full control, yeah. yeah. Well, and here's the other side, and I'll just mention this briefly. If you're the kind of person who does those mm -hmm. kinds of things, you can sell them on Pond5. They have the best yeah. royalty rate in the business, and you set your own price. So you determine mm -hmm. what you want for uh, for your uh, stuff. That's really that's cool. cool. That's pretty with the ink and the water and all that. Oh. That's really nice. Anyway, Pond5... Seven dollars. Seven dollars. It's like what? I know. And 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 the way we a lot of times when we're thinking about stock photography, we're oftentimes just thinking about how long would it take us to do it. Like you go, oh, it might cost 
this, but it, you know, thinking about it costs me more than seven. <laughs> seven <laughs> like, like, dollars. Like thinking really? about going out really? and talking Go to someone, to take take my take that own photo. Fo- you know, yeah. that's that photo represents. Um, right. You know, you're taking advantage of mass production because that photo represents a day of work. You know, or or more. You know, and that's going to be more than seven dollars. Let's uh, wrap this in thing up. We got to wrap it up. Pond 5com slash Mac break because somebody's got to be out of here at one. You I have to leave. Well, what are you slowing us down for? I'm sorry. I'm ready to do my pick. Let <laughs> do me do my pick, pick, and then I'm getting out of here. Do your pick. Okay, pick here's the, the pick, and then Mr. I'm leaving. Alex Lindsay um, of Pixel Core. So my my pick for the week is Adam Wilt is a. Uh, is an incredible, uh, like he's the kind of guy that I read, you know, I read his stuff to figure out how video should work. <laughs> and so, uh, and he has put out an app for the iPhone called the Cinemeter. Um, so, the Cinemeter. Yeah. And it's, it is, if you, so it, it, what it is basically scopes for your iPhone. Um, and so if you're trying to figure out a green screen or figure out, you know, how your exposure set up and, or just have some good, clean fun. Um, <laughs> you know, the, uh, you have, um, uh, you know, because, I mean, Scopes, to me, is, you know, it's not not quite as good as Plants vs. Zombies, but just just short. It's only four ninety nine, and um, you're able to do a lot of, uh, especially, as I said, you know, really looking at a background, um, you know, checking out your lighting, whether it's even, um, doing a lot of things that would technically, I mean, when I started using meters, just to kind of, uh, Scopes, um, just to make sure you're clear, these were like $10,000 each. And now it's four ninety nine on your iPhone. Wow! And so, um, how do you uh, get the video? Oh, you just use the built-in camera. The built-in camera, and that's good enough to do this. So it's it's it, it part, that's a little bit of a toy end of things, but 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 a lot of times what you can do with this is um, figure out evenness of lighting and so on and so forth. So especially if you're trying to get a really even green screen or something like that, it's qualitative. It doesn't really matter if if it's if it's right on. Um, but it does give you some ideas of what that exposure is going to look like. Um, it does have some really interesting controls over ISO, shutter, so on and so forth, so that you could actually get an idea. This You still want to look at scopes through your actual camera to really know what's going on. But um, for evaluating qualitatively what you're looking at, um, it's a pretty interesting, uh, pretty interesting wow, product. Wow, that's neat. So, and at $4.99, as I said, it's... Pretty pretty nifty. So should, um, should we? And have if you're this? shooting again, if you're shooting with your iPhone, then this is very valuable. It's all you like, need. So, so if, if, if you're right. gonna if you're gonna do something, if you're gonna do a, a little shoot with your iPhone, and um, and you want to make sure that it, you've locked its you know all of its little bits and pieces, um, then this is this is great. So C I N E meter. Yep. It is an iPhone app. So you have to if you're in an iPad, you gotta just click that iPhone tab to see it. Yes, there is no great. iPad version. Of it's Coolio. Wow. That's kind of amazing. Could we use that here? You could if you're using iPhones. I mean, for that kind of thing, if you're shooting No, but like iPhones. if just to look at a well, set to make sure that the light's right? Or- you would typically go through your actual cameras and do that with your scopes. So you would right. you would use something like Scopebox. You know, right. so Scopebox is what we would use. We would we would, we would run all I was like 50 bucks or something oh, like that. Okay. So it's, you know, so you would run it through Scopebox or for free, you would run it through Condor. That's what we, we do. Yeah. See, there's Chad showing. Yeah, he's got, he's got scopes built he's got into scopes. it. That's in the uh, Tricaster. Yeah. Yep. So that's built in. We use that to, to, I used to use that all the time to set the lighting. So you want, you told me 80%, right? For your face. Your face. For your face. So I would move my head like this and say, okay, there's my face on the scope. <laughs> now let's make well, that 80%. You, once you get, once you're used See, right to. right there. Yeah. <laughs> once you, yeah, there you go. See? You go, and once you get once you get used to knowing what you're looking at on a scope, it really is very useful. So. Chad, do you know what you're looking at? Right. Yeah, it, well, and luckily these scopes on these tri- on this TriCaster they're a lot better than the old one. Oh, huh? Yeah, they're and you, you can see color, so right. so it's much. It's, it, yeah, like in high school, it was black and white, right? Like we or green. Yeah, you, we you, have you, the uh, 850 extreme, and that really I have to say that is a lot better. Right, yeah. and so you can see skin tone in right. here. So right. I know that you know, you know where my head is. right here. This is actually you know, that's my shirt. Right. Well, that down there is your shirt, but that's your <laughs> that's because I have a flesh colored shirt. Right. Some people th- probably watching the show now think I'm not wearing clothing, but it's it's a flesh-colored <laughs> shirt, just so you know. Uh, Rene Rich, thank you, Alex. You thank can you. take off if I gotta you want. Go. All right. Bye-bye, bye, guys. Thank you, Alex. Thanks, Alex. Alex. Gore, everybody. Thank you very much. Whee! Goodbye. Bye-bye, bye-bye. we got two people in the studio audience, and you almost broke the table again. <laughs> Rene Ritchie, your pick of the week, sir. My pick of the week, it is not... Uh, new, but it has got a whole new aspect to it, and that is App.net. They announced their free tier yesterday. So previously, originally, App.net was a platform, and then when Twitter became less developer-friendly, they pivoted quickly, and they made a Twitter-like microblogging service, and you could do almost everything you could with Twitter. Uh, But they didn't stop with that. They made a messaging platform, which was kind of like 
DMs, but it, it's much more fully featured. It has groups and all these different things. And then they announced a files API, which is kind of sort of like cloud storage, like Dropbox. So you get so many gigs of free storage with your account. And now as of yesterday, you can get a free account. You can only follow 40 people with it and you have limited storage uh, and you have to be invited right now. They haven't opened the floodgates yet, but it gives people a chance to try it out. And I like the audacity of them. They're a, a very young company. They're a very fast moving company. And it looks like they're trying to invent, not invent, but popularize this idea of a very personal, very flexible cloud platform that is both friendly for users and very open for developers. And you don't have to worry about advertising because they don't do it. You don't have to worry about um, any corporate interest. They've really aligned it for users and developers. And it's if you've ever tried app.net, it's, it's very interesting. But that 50 and now $36 price of entry might have put you off. So if you can find an invitation now, you can get in for free and, and give it a shot. And I recommend tap the folks who do... Uh, uh uh, tap, what is it? Tap bot? Tap bots, yeah. Tweet bot. May have a uh, app.net version of that, which is Net excellent. Bot. And it's free now. Netbot. So, uh, yeah, get the free, you know, if you can, get the invitation to the free account. I paid 100 bucks for app.net. You know, I never use it. I think, in a way, this is a this is a last-ditch effort to get it, uh, get some users in. It's very geeky now. I still use Twitter because that's where the audience is. The people who read right. my writing, the mainstream people are on Twitter. But a lot of the geeks, the developers, the programmers, all of that oh, yeah. conversation has moved to app.net. Yeah. So it's, it's got its own identity now, and that's really interesting. I should log in. I haven't used it in a while. <laughs> Andy Anatko, your pick of the week. Uh, mine is a really cool product that is, is it's one of those perfect little products. Uh, I travel with uh, like a $200 like little portable Bluetooth speaker. And that's great because if you're, you know, if you're in your hotel room, you want to be able to have a little bit of a better experience with your music and your movies. But you don't necessarily always want to travel with a brick that has cost you 200 bucks. You know, me, really all you want is for you want this speaker, but you just want it to be a little bit louder. So simplest thing in the world. It's a product called Soundbender. And this is what it is all it is is a plastic little the plastic equivalent of just doing this with your hand uh it's got a magnet so it just simply clips right uh to a any to any uh ipad that will use a uh the magnetic cover automatically aligns itself over the speaker port and all it does is it's, it's, it's it does the spinal tap thing it's if you got it just makes it one louder so i, I don't know if it's going to actually come across on the magic radio but so here's 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 the, the ipad without it i know Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't amplify it. It just focus. It just directs the audio directly toward you. It's uh, like a little just, ear for your iPad. Yeah, exactly, and that really is all it is. Uh, I mean, this is something that I do all the time. Like when I'm trying to watch a watch something like on my iPhone, I'll like cup my my hand around it uh, just to like redirect the audio. But this will do it for you. Uh, and as I said, it's a perfect little product because this. I, I'm sort of stealing myself as I'm as someone is like uh, recommending this to me. As I'm saying, okay, is it a piece of cr piece of crap? Like, no, it's I mean it's plastic, but it's durable plastic. It's, it's flexible, so you can put it inside your bag. And it's not gonna it's not gonna screw up. The magnet aligns itself automatically, so it's easy to use. Uh, and then the last thing I'm sort of stealing myself for is, yeah, but then so you decided to charge forty dollars for this piece of plastic. Nope, it's twelve ninety nine. So you can you can easily afford just to grab one of these or grab a couple of these and just have it in your bag as you go. So I mean, for twelve ninety nine, that's that's not a, that's not a whole lot of money for a for a little gadget that does uh, some pretty cool stuff. You recommend it? I recommend it again. It's twelve ninety nine for twenty bucks. I'd be like, eh, I don't know, but for twelve ninety nine for something you will probably buy and you'll toss it inside your bag and then maybe you'll forget about it until you're in the coffee shop, or you're in, you're waiting for a bus somewhere without your headphones, or you're in your hotel room and like, oh wait a minute, I have that thing in my bag that I bought three weeks ago and forgot about. It. Oh yes, this is perfect. This is wonderful. <laughs> it's great for gaming and movies and anything you're using your iPad and your lap. You have one too. There's a lot of different kinds. I haven't tried that one, but yeah. at CES and MacWorld, everyone was making those kinds of things for Ma for iPhones and for iPads, and they worked really right. well. Huh. It's not an uncommon idea. Uh, there's, I've had, we've had things like this for like the original iPhone, like since the since the days of the original iPhone. What I like about it is that they didn't overthink it. They didn't try to make it so big you don't want to carry it around. And again, they didn't charge a stupid amount of money for it. Right. And this is twelve ninety nine is a roughly the roughly about what you you know for for a nicely made product. Okay, that'll work for me. Yeah, interesting. Not Fifty bucks of aluminum. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a Kickstarter. It's like you, 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 you always beware of those Kickstarter projects where someone like borrowed a, a white bed sheet from their mom and hung it behind <laughs> them. And, and, and so they, they put themselves like off kilter saying, it's not just redirecting sound. It doesn't compromise the battery. <laughs> and the design is CNC precision C4 grade milled aluminum. We really think it's the best audio enhancement that's ever been made for the iPad. I'll buy it. I buy anything on Kickstarter. <laughs> yeah. Still waiting for my. But this, is, but this isn't Kickstarter. You, it's, it's it's the rather more traditional direct. You give them money and they send you a thing. <laughs> oh, you can buy it yeah. now. Exactly. No, it's 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 uh, go to thesoundbender.com. You get you give them money. They send you a thing. <laughs> Wait, it's Andy, amazing. Is there an, is there an app, is there an app with like a number of people that I can wait in line? Because I'm used to waiting in line for apps and for accessories. <laughs> now I need to be told yeah. there's 300,000 people ahead of me before. I oh yeah, on. that's a fun. So I finally got mailbox. Boy, it was a long time. Did. Uh, uh, but I finally got it, and now I got another one uh, that's that's doing the tempo? same thing. Yeah, tempo. Yeah. Um, I was going to show some of these, but I can't because <laughs> I'm on the list. Yeah. <laughs> Have you gotten through to tempo yet? One of our writers, uh, they they set up one of our writers with Mailbox, and I, I think with Tempo. Um, Mailbox I, is I, awesome, and I should sh actually next time I'll show it. Although I'm sure Sarah has showed it on i5 for the iPhone. Uh, it's an iPhone app that is a better way to do email, and I have to agree it is. It's, it's a much better way to do email. Um, and then uh, Tempo is like a calendar app, right? Yeah. And they're all server-side, so they've had some issues where they've gone down and they've come back up, and they're trying to deal with the demand. Right. No, I understand what little, they're doing. Yeah. Gmail did that, too, where, in fact, it was a very hot invitation. Remember when you first uh, when they first launched Gmail to get in? Line up so the new invitations. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, and it's cool because the app, what, what you do is you you get a reservation code, you enter it into the app, and then it says, you're, you know, there are, you're, you're, there's 251,000 people ahead of you. There's 8 million people behind you. So that's where you are in line. And then when you first launch the app, each time it goes, and the number goes down, and eventually you get in. It's kind of, it's actually kind of a good idea. It's cool. But that's my story, and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> All right. Hey, thank you very much for being here. I Moore's Renee Ritchie, I M O R E dot com is a great place for Apple information. Uh, of all kinds. I say rumors all the time, but it's really just one of the many things you do. It's a really good blog, really good Apple we, blog. Last night, I had the pleasure of uh, recording a, a, a team-up show. We got uh, Guy English and Mark Edwards from Bajango, Lauren Brichter, who did Tweety and Letterpress, and Sebastian oh, DeWitt, wow. who was with Apple and now Double Twist. And we spent an hour talking about future interfaces like the Connect and Siri and Google Now. And it Oh, I got to really listen to like, that. We just posted it, so it just went up on the site about an hour ago. So uh, imore.com, and then just yep. look for the podcast? Yeah, it's, it's in both feeds. It's in both debug and iterate, so you can you can try either of them. Oh, awesome. I really want it. That sounds really interesting. Yeah, there are some really smart guys. Yeah. All right. Thank you for being here, uh, Renee. Andy Anakos of the Chicago Sun-Times and the Celestial Wist of Bandwidth, www.cwob.com, joins us every week. You were great on Twit this week. Thank you for doing that. I appreciate it. It's nice to be there at the nighttime. Yeah. It was really fun to have you. We've got to do that more often. I, will, I would like to do that more often. A little cross-pollinization. Well, I know, you know, I never know. Sometimes people, you know, uh, are busy. And I, uh, it's the weekend. I don't want to take and in, eat into your su Sunday. Su sun Sunday night has traditionally been like there's always been good things on TV on Sunday night. And because I don't have to get kids ready for school, it's always been like, I'm going to be home. I'm going to be sitting down and be looking at a right. screen. It'd be it's cool to begin that evening by sitting down, looking at a screen, and seeing your smiling face behind you. This Sunday, boy, oh, was the Academy Awards. What a, I felt so what a waste of four hours. Oh my <laughs> god, that was that was not pretty. Horrible. At the end of it, I'm thinking, God, why did I do this? I felt I only saw it on Twitter. I didn't actually watch it. Yeah, all. well, it was a lot on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. This snark <laughs> level of Twitter pegged. <laughs> I was hoping it would fail well, but no such luck. Yeah, no, <laughs> it, it's handling that traffic pretty well now. Um, it, I, I like Seth MacFarlane. I'm a Family Guy fan, but man, I like Captain Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> but the two together, eh, not so, not so much. <laughs> I don't know. I think the. Uh, oh. the it, I don't know what's going on with that show. Well, also, I, I have to have some sympathy for him from that show because he he likes singing. He's very proud of his singing. Yeah. He's released, produced his own yeah. own singing, and of course, he's going to open up the show with by singing a couple numbers. Right. But of course, They're at offensive. some point, they, the producers have to inform him that oh, by the way, also on the bill are going to be three of the most brilliant vocalists yeah. of the 20th yeah. century. Yeah, oh, and by the way, we're going to have Barbara Streisand as a surprise yeah. guest. So, if yeah. we're grading on the curve, yeah. 
Yes, yeah. you're not going to. Well, he looks good in a tuxedo, home. though. Very sharp in a tuxedo. That's a very I expensive, yeah. nicely tailored. No one can fault his tuxedo. No one he, can he, fault his tuxedo. I, I'm, I, I'm sure that his friends will tell them that was a great, great tuxedo. I'm hearing the great buzz and feedback <laughs> about your tuxedo. <laughs> well, and if you can find They're the moment, ask your tuxedo back next your tuxedo year. Tuxedo subreddit. Is just <laughs> if you so can happy. find the moment where Shirley Bassey sings Goldfinger, it's probably worth fast forwarding to that as well, because that was good. Fast forward past the first 20 seconds, though. I, I, I think I wonder if the monitors were off a little bit because it seems as though it took about oh, 20 yeah, seconds for her and the get band to orchestra yeah. to get in sync with each well, other. The mi well, because the band was down the road in the Capitol Records building. Oh, oh, that's where they're cutting away to. Oh, that was smart. No, no, she Brilliant. was. No, she no, was no, at the Dolby the, Theater. Right, right, the right, band right. was down the road. I didn't. I, I didn't know that the orchestra was not inside. The, the orchestra was not in the same room. What? Who? Yeah. What? And oh, sure. On and on and on. And then the the Abe Lincoln joke somebody mentioned. That was it. That was the lowest point I've ever <laughs> in my in history. And then he goes too soon. Yes. As a matter of fact, <laughs> might have been. Yeah. And I'm not sure exactly why the first lady was giving the Oscar for best movie, but it, I, you know, whatever her advisors thought, no, that was a bad idea. <laughs> oh, yo, yo. Anyway, I don't know why we got into that. Just because I know Andy, you're a fan. I'm a fan of the Oscars. It's uh, although I, I well, without without turn turn this into uh, another hour of the show, it's like I'm a, it, I'm amazed that we're asked like five years ago. I would be really the the, the Oscars was like my Super Bowl. Me too. I'd be really yeah. excited about it. Yeah. And I have like my scorecards. Yeah. I write all about this. Yeah. This year it was we, we ended the show and. Ten minutes, ten minutes before like the Oscars was going to start, and yet I sat here for about fifty minutes just like fiddling with like hardware settings, and then went back <laughs> upstairs, and then debated: Do I watch the first half hour of Amazing Race on DVR, yeah. or do I join the Oscars in progress? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Watch the Oscars. I'm, I watched I watch the, the whole because, thing end yeah. to end, and then I'm sorry I did. Yeah, <laughs> I'm really. Oh well, PlayStation really? Four event Oscars, PlayStation oh. Four event Oscars. Yeah, they yeah, should, no, they should, that. They should, I think I would vote for the PlayStation 4 event, actually. <laughs> they should, the, 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 if the producers are fishing for who to book for next year, not not necessarily as hosts, but as producers, they should find out what team does Apple's keynote events yeah. and say, yes. you're doing the Oscars next year. Well, you know what I found out? I'm reading this snark column on Deadline, and what I found out is the guys who produce the Oscars are the same guys who yeah. produce Chicago, which is why yep. they kept having Chicago which came out number, musical number a musical tribute to the 10th anniversary of the release <laughs> of Chicago, and in our medley of, of great music songs, how about a number from Chicago? Chicago. Yeah. It's like why? And then now I understand. Uh, yeah. And then uh, I think Seth MacFarlane hit it on the, or maybe it was uh, Captain Kirk hit it on the head. Next year, Tina and Amy. Okay, just yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, hey, thank you for joining us. This portion <laughs> yeah. of Oscar talk. <laughs> with with Andy and Renee. Uh, we do Mac Break Weekly, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, 1900 UTC every Tuesday on this network. I hope you watch live. It's fun if you watch live. You get all the good things like Oscar talk that we take out of the edited version <laughs> of the show. But if you can't watch live, do uh, download a copy. We make it available after the fact on demand audio and video at twit.tv slash MBW. Uh, and wherever finer internet television programs are streamed. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Renee. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next Thanks, time. Thanks, Leo. I'm Mac Break Weekly.